Shalom. Oh, pray to the Most High, Yeshua, Haya. Ba Hashem, Hamashia, Yeshai. Baba Wakudash. This is your Abshema, the Holy Seed of Jeshurun, the Sacred Heart, the offspring of Yasha Allah. Blessed to come before you another day, y'all, with a word of truth. A real, real powerful word today. Um, pray, amen, that y'all be edified, be empowered by the spirit of Ahayat Hashem Yeshai. And um, you receive this truth, man. So we're going to go into this, man. And understand, man, these lessons that are even coming out now um, with the spirit of Ahayat Hashem Yeshai is to get Israel right, okay? It's time that we get in order, all right? And um, again, we don't want to keep the most high. We don't want to have him having any reason not to be our defense, not to be the things he promised, you know, in scripture for us. And uh, we want to get upright in order. So we're going to go into the breakdown and the understanding of who, who the strangers are, the sojourners, and the Gentiles are in the scriptures. And why is this? Because there's no overachievement in this walk. There is an obedience that we must, you know, adhere to. So we're going to break down who they are and how we're supposed to be dealing with them, all right? And if you be the will of the Most High, you know, you can go over all this stuff yourself and then you can reason within yourself and in your soul what you're going to believe is true. Because there's many doctrines out there on this, and we're just going to, you know, bring it all together. It's a long video, a lot of information for now, so let's go ahead and get started, right? First, we're going to start in Acts chapter 9 and verse 1, right? And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Most High, went unto the high priest. And desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So this is the persecution of you know those that were believing on Yeshai, you know, and the law. And of course, he had received his revelation, so he was seeing these people as heretics, as uh, people that were enemies to the to the to the law and to the Most High. Right, verse three. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Verse 5, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And Yeshai said, I am Yeshai, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And it's hard for you to stop this here, what we got going on, right? But you're persecuting me because I didn't bless these apostles to go out and teach these truths and give them the um, revelation of Yeshai, which is that he came for our hope and salvation. And you're killing these people, you know, proselytes, people that are coming into the understanding, you're killing them. So, you know, and that's the issue I got with you. Why are you persecuting me, man, in my church? Verse 6, and and he trembled, this is Saul, uh, he trembled and, and astonished, said, Master, what wilt thou have me to do? And Yeshai said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Right? So, um, there's a man named Ananias that's there. Most I gives him a vision, gives him a breakdown. So, yeah, um, there's a man that's praying. He sees his vision. He goes, um, in the next verse, verse 7, And the man who was journeying with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man, and Saul rose from the earth, when, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they led him by his hand and brought him unto Damascus, right? And so um, Ananias, he had, Ananias was given a vision at, at this time, and um, Saul came into the city, fasted three days straight, and uh, the most I said, um, Ananias, go touch this man, because he received his hand, he received his sight, and um, his name is Saul. Ananias like, hold up, um, I, this guy, you know, um, he, he's a known murderer, you know, of us that believe on you. You know, and then your son is shy. You sure you want me to go to him? So verse 15, it says, And, uh, and the most I said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Right. So he's convincing that nice. Now go to him. It's cool. I'll call this man. But as you can see, who is he going to bear his name to? The Gentiles. And king 
nations and the children of Israel. So one might say, hey, there it is right there. All right? So he was called to go to the Gentiles. He tells you right there. Tell you to go to the kings of Israel. We're going to see, you know, and break this down, who he was called to go to, man. Job now to verse 17, and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put his hand, hands on him and said, Brother Saul, Yeshai, even Yeshai that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mayest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Immediately, and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight for with and arose and was baptized, right? So, what we want to bring out here is that he received the Ruach of Dash. Paul has the Ruach of Dash, right? And he was hit with a bright light by the king Hamashiach Yishai on the way there. So these are two, okay, of the Alahim that have already confirmed with him and ministered unto him on what he's about to do, right? <laughs> now, there's a reason we go in there. Let's, let's, let's go over really quick the first John, right? First John chapter 5, and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So all three of these, like I've always taught y'all, are all going to bear witness of each other. There's not going to be any variance. There's not going to be any differences between the Father, the Word, and the Ruach Kodash, right? So are you seeing already, Paul is filled with the Ruach Kodash, and he is given instruction by Hamashiach Yishai, all right? And um, there's a book, actually a biblical text. I think it's called the, um, the Apocalypse of Paul, right? And you can um, reference it. It's a biblical uh the biblical reference for it is in, um, I think it's in 2 Corinthians. Let me look for y'all right quick so y'all can know that it's all right to go check this book out. And it goes into the detail of what happened when you shot him with the light. All right. This is um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, um, verse 2. It says, I knew a man in, in Yeshai, in Amashiach, about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. I had known such a one caught up to the third heaven. So in the spirit, when Yeshua hit Paul with the light, his spirit was caught up to the third heaven. Verse 3, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. I had known how that he was caught up unto paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So the apocalypse of Paul talks about that right there, when he was caught up to the third heaven, caught up to the paradise and breaks down what Yeshai told him. So when he came back down, he had complete understanding of who he was talking, teaching, and what he was teaching, and how he was to teach it, because he is you he was an expert of the law. Acts 26 and 5, right? So, you got the Holy Spirit talking to him, you got Yeshai, you know, giving him the instruction. Now, let's go to St. John. Okay. And let's see if Yeshai who was filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, after he baptized, the Holy Spirit lighted up on him as a dove, okay? And that spirit is the spirit of the Father, okay? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Father. This is St. John 5 and 19. Then answered Yeshua and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. So the Father's coming in the same truth, the same understanding, as his father. He's not doing nothing of himself, right? So everything he's teaching is not contradictory. It's not a new revelation. It's the same thing as the father, right? Let's go over there and get one more. John 8, 28, then Yeshai. Then said Yeshai unto them, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he and I, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my father had taught me, I speak these things. So he's not coming with his own situation. He's not being like Saul saying, you know what? I said kill all the Amalekites, but I'm going to bring the king alive. And I'm going to bring all these cattle to sacrifice unto the most. I'm going to do, I'm going to overachieve. I'm going to do better. No, he's doing exactly what his father told him, taught him, right? Verse 29, and he that sent me is with me. The father had not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. So he's not doing his own thing. So what are we showing? 
that they all bear witness of each other, right? So let's get an understanding how the Father feels about the other nations because they all are going to be bear witness of each other, the Father, the Word, and the Uwak that was in, That was inside Paul. So you're going to see that what Paul's teaching is the same thing that the Father believes, right? This is what we're going to break down, okay? Mind you, you can't teach. You, you, you shouldn't be teaching at all if you're going to teach from the New Testament forward, okay? You got to come in the volume of the book. That's why Yeshua said, man, Hebrews 10 and 7, for lo, I come in the volume of the book, is written of me, is written of me to do thy will, O Father, right? So you can't teach from the front. You teach from, from Matthew forward, you're going to be teaching an unlearned false doctrine, man, all right? So let's see how the Father feels about other nations, all right? This is Isaiah 40 and 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. So if you got a big bucket of water, and one drop falls out, you don't care about that drop. That's how the Father says the nations are. They're as a drop of a bucket. If you got a whole bucket of water, you don't care about that drop. And you don't care about the nations. He's just The nations are just like that drop. And are counted as the small dust of the balance. When you want a proper reading on a balance, on a scale, you blow the dust off. He says they are counted as the small dust of the balance. You don't care about that dust you just blew off. That's how the Father feels about the nations. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. The isles don't mean nothing to him, okay? His eyes are upon Zion, upon Israel all the time, okay? And he held up Zion. He's not thinking about the isles, the islands, right? Verse 16, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast there are sufficient for a burnt offering. This is why Saul was sinning, because he tried to take some animals from the Amalekites and sacrifice them to the Most High. The Most High said, man, I want your animals, right? The animals of the other nations are not even eligible to be sacrificed unto me, right? That should also tell you the people, okay? This this, this, should, this also precepts to the people. Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. We are the physical temple now. So you think the Most High wants to receive a sacrifice from the other nations of their bodies when he didn't even want their animals, when it was animal sacrifice? No, he doesn't. Uh, verse 17, all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing. And vanity. So this is clear. It's not a dark speech. God said, all the nations are you nothing to me. Matter of fact, you, you are less than nothing to me, man. You're less than that. Right? This is what I had taught the shot. All right? And this is what the Spirit bear witness in Paul that was taught to the shot. <laughs> and that the Father taught the shot. So this is what Paul's teaching. Now he's teaching in a learned way because he knows the law. So you, you don't seem to understand the things that he say or who he's talking to that they could never be these people of the other nations. Could never be a Gentile. They could never be a stranger that he's preaching to in reference to salvation, right? Now, of course, please let be a bone precept. Let's get another one. Let's get, um, let's go on the pocket. Let's get the rest of Esther, right? Let's get the rest of Esther. Let's of Esther 14 and 11. It says, O power, give not thy scepter unto them that be nothing, <laughs> and let them not laugh at our fall, but turn their devices upon themselves and make him an example that had begun this against us. This is Esther speaking on Amon, right? And see, you know, at his Xerxes and was about to have this nation destroy us. So he said, give not thy scepter, thy power to them that are nothing. This is the other nations, right? Let's go another one. It was known throughout Israel that they're nothing. This is what I just said, right? Let's get second Ezra, all right? Chapter six. Okay, what does it say? Second Ezra chapter six and... Mm, start reading three. Upon the sixth day, when thou gave his commandment unto the earth, that before thee it should bring forth beasts, cattle, and creeping things. Verse 54. And after these things, Adam also, whom thou madest master of all thy creatures, 
of him come we all and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So everybody comes from Adam. You hear all the time, and we're all children of the Most High. We all come from Adam. Well, we all come from Adam, but we're not all children of the Most High. Verse 55, all this have I spoken before thee, O power, because thou madest the world for our sake. Verse 56, as for the other people, okay, which also come from Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. So and, um, he, he has the same understanding as Isaiah, same understanding as Hadassah, Esther, that the nations are nothing, but be like unto spittle. Oh, I don't know anybody who likes or loves or cares about spit, okay? We got to just deal with what, what the words say. This is, this is the, the uh, Old Testament before you shine. I is speaking, he says, it's saying that that, that, but they be, but be like unto spittle and as like in the abundance of them, all of them, unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Preacher boom, preach up, right? Saying the same thing he said in Isaiah. So the father, he has no care for the people. He, he says they're like spit. He says they're nothing. And they're liking them to a job that falls of the vessel. Same thing breakdown I just told you. He doesn't care about it. Right? Now, let's go a little further. Because some like to say, well, that's how he used to feel about it. <laughs> he don't feel like that no more. Okay. Let's read the scripture that that's the way he feels. It's Malachi 3 and 6. For I am a higher, I change not. Right? I don't switch up. I don't flip-flop. I ain't wishy-washy. I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. Right? You can't find in the scripture where he said, I change. I'm going to change later on. He said, I change not. I don't change. So he, he don't care about the nations before Mashiach is shot, and he still don't care about the nations after Mashiach is shot. They're less than nothing before. They're less than nothing after. Right? Malachi 3 and 6, for I am a higher, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now, check this out. When he give his reference to saying he don't change, right? When he's explaining this, he's telling Israel, I don't change. Because if I did, y'all sons of Jacob, y'all would be consumed. Y'all would be burnt up. Okay, so understand. This is for you to understand that it's still all about Israel. Because if let's see, the way he's breaking it down is he's saying, if I don't change, then he said, I am the most high, I change not. And then he gives a, a, a result of what would happen if he does change. It says, therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. He doesn't say, therefore, um, all the nations are, are, are going to get salvation now. Or therefore, I'm going to make a covenant with other people. Right? He gives, he gives a direct answer of why he don't change. And it's only regarding Israel. Meaning, if the Jews rejected him, like everyone like to say, if he don't want to deal with Israel no more, um, he could have said something else here then. He could have been like, I don't change, therefore, um, I brought all the other nations into the covenant now. He says, no, it's still only about Jacob. I do not change, therefore, I ain't killed you off, right? That's the only thing I want to do. I'm not saying I'm ready to go get with somebody else. It's about you. Whether you're being obedient or disobedient, it's still only going to be about you, and I don't change, or you would be dead right now. Okay, that's that's what he's telling you. If I changed up, then you'd be dead. There ain't no if I changed up, I would let everybody else in. You see that? It's about us continually, right? Now let's go to Hebrews. Let's see if the son, Amashiachishai, let's see if he changed, right? Let's see if he the same, right? This is Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7, remember them that have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of Ahiah, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation, right? This is, a, this is a letter to Hebrews, us, right, encouraging us, right, to continue in the faith and respecting our elders that talk, right? Verse 8, Yeshua Mashiach, the same yesterday and today and forever. Well, Yeshua don't change either. It says he's the same. He ain't changed. And he already said, it's my father, I do what the father say. So he's lining up. But he said, but I'm with his father. Right? Same yesterday is a reference for the things that were before him, the time of before in history. I was the same before, I'm the same today, and all in the future. I'm going to all be, always be the same. Right? So, understand, we go into this to establish how to 
most how he feels about the other nations and how he hasn't changed up, how he feels about it. Okay, now I'm just saying, you're going to have to reckon with the scriptures, man. Okay, you got to reckon with what it say, man. All things are written up for time for our learning, right? So if someone's not teaching you this, then I'm going to show you what they're doing. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh and preaches another ye shy, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Mind you, this is talking about the serpent who been coming in the spirit, deceiving the people, right? And so it's telling you, if someone's teaching you a doctrine that's inclusive in terms of salvation and being saved and us joining ourselves or other, letting other nations join unto us as fellow heirs to the promise, right? As fellow heirs to the promise, that's a false doctrine, y'all. That's another Hamashiach they're teaching you, okay? Because Yeshua feels the same way to his father. His father said, man, all the nations are less than nothing to me. And Yeshua told Paul to go teach. So if you, you been reading Paul, you can't allow yourself to believe that the people he's teaching to are non-Israelites because the father doesn't care about them. He, they, they're, they're nothing to him, right? You have to know this, right? Let me show you something right quick. Can you, can you, can you get a quick precept, man? To show y'all something, man. You know? Show y'all something. Just want to show y'all who the Gentiles are, but I got to bring this out, man. They seem to say, we need to know what the word salvation means, man. We need to put a stamp on it. What does it mean? Okay, This is Psalms 14 and 7. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. When a higher bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. So the salvation which pertains to Israel, like it just said, is what? Us being gathered back out of the nation that we were scattered and placed back in our land. That's what salvation is, man. Most of them ain't no covenant with other people. Ain't no other people was given our promised land. Ain't no other people was gathered out of our promised land. It's us. It's our land. It's our salvation. We need to be saved from the hands of our enemies or we're scattered right now. Okay. This is what salvation is. I read it again. Psalms 14 and 7. Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. When Ahiah bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Amen. That's what salvation is, y'all. Let's get a precept for that. Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46. Mm. That's not what it said. Oh, 47. Okay. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 13. I bring near my righteousness, it shall not be far off. And my salvation, this is the Father talking, and my salvation shall not tarry. It's not going to delay, right? And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. That's so particular and clear. I love the Most High because he don't play them half-stepping games. He tell you exactly what it is, man. Right? Where would you see any of this phraseology in a, re in a reference to any other nation on this earth. Where? Where's it at? Okay. Not no beat around the bush. You know, people became Jews and people sought unto our power. It does not tell you since he's, since the Most High and the Word is perfectly, uh, 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 perfectly um, able to speak a specific reference to salvation and who is for for Israel. Why doesn't it do that specifically for the other nations? Like, that's not a far fetched thing if it's being that specific with us. Because it doesn't exist, y'all. That's why. Because it's not true. All right, let's move on, man. Most high man chose his people, right? And you got to know this, man. You know, some people say, oh, well, no, oh, Israel, man, they'll disobey man. Most high cast them away. Okay. Let's see what the most high say, man. This is Deuteronomy. We got to go to the law, which was written first. Okay. You got to know what was said first before you start jumping all up in what Paul say. Okay. And Paul's learned in this. Paul knows what this says. So he's teaching with the understanding of what this says. All right. This is Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 15. Only the Most High had delighted in thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 12 patriarchs, to love them 
and he chose their seed, their offspring after them, even you, right? Above all people, as it is this day. So even this day, right now, huh? The Most High is down and has a love for his people, Israel, right? They're still his people. So just like he still feel about the other nations the way he feel about them, he still feel about Israel the same way he always felt about them, right? Let's go to Romans, man. After the death, resurrection of Mashiach, Yeshai, and from Paul, let's see if there's anything different. They're, they all bear witness of each other. Romans 11 and 1. I say then, hath Ahia cast away his people? He's, is he not dealing with Israel no more? Is it, just, is it a universal everybody thing now? Ahia forbid, for I, am, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Verse 2, Ahia hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew, right? So show me. Most side down with us, man, all right? Let's go to Jeremiah. 31. Let's get a little more out of that. Right? Jeremiah 31. Okay, and what, what we're doing, we're, we're now we're setting apart, okay, the scriptural prophecies and documentation of the Most High dealing with Israel exclusively. He shows you how he feels about the other nations. So we're giving you exclusive scriptures to give you a foundation to know how to understand what Paul is talking about and the whole New Testament as a whole. All right. You got to know this stuff that was written of old, and these things in the new cannot contradict the scriptures. They will not be broken, ever. When you got to understand it, then you know the scriptures can be broken, right? This Jeremiah 31 and uh, 35 does say, The higher which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divides the sea when the waves are of gore. I have host is his name. Verse 36. If those ordinances depart from before me, said the higher, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Right? So all these things, the elements in the earth, these creation of the most high, the sun, the moon, stars, they have times, they're going up, they're coming down. Where the water, how far it comes up on the beach, where the most high said the limits and the bounds of it. All these things start changing up. Then he said, then Israel ain't my people no more. Okay, so we're always going to be his people. As long as you see all these things going on in the earth, yeah, we're always going to be his people. Verse, 80, verse 37, thus said the high, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, said the Most High. So heaven is still up there, right? And um, men keep drilling down in the earth, but that's why the Most High got Leviathan down there to break it bash up any type of mechanical device that they trying to use to measure the depths. Or the, that's why Leviathan is down there, man. Okay, there's water under the earth, right? Leviathan is a sea monster that's under there. And they try to measure the depth. Leviathan is going to break it. So they're never going to be able to measure the depths of the, of, of the earth or see the, 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 um, the heights of heaven. Never. Never. All right? Therefore, Israel is always going to be the most high people. Man, let's get in Matthew. Okay, let's, let's get in the Gospels, right, and go over a couple things. This is Matthew 26 and 59, right? So 26 and 59. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council saw a false witness against Yeshua to put him to death. Hmm, that's pretty particular right there, okay? You got the common um, doctrine in the Christian church. The Jews rejected Christ. The Jews rejected him. They didn't love him. They, they didn't care. But this scripture, uh, out the gospel saying, now the chief priests and elders and all the council, the Sanhedrin, sought false witness against Yeshua to put him to death. These are the people that were in authority, okay, and governing Israel without grace and without love, without charity, according to the law, looking to just kill them, looking to hold their position under the Roman Empire. This is what they were doing, right? They're the ones that were rejecting them. Now let's get Mark. Let's get Mark 8 and 31. And it says, and he began, verse 31, and he charged them that they should tell no man. This is shy, always telling, um, giving revelation to his apostles. Even when he healed people, he said, don't tell nobody. You know, because he knew what he came on earth to do. And he didn't want to, you know, give that away. Um, Mark 8 and 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders. So who rejected him? Okay. Does it say to Jews? Let's see. Be rejected of the elders 
and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Where does it say um, all the Jews rejected him in there? Where does it say that? Where's that? Where's it at? Where's it at? It's not in there. It's not in there. It's only the only these that the scriptures say rejected him are the only ones that rejected him. Okay, read it to you twice. Right? Precept on precept. Okay. This is how you how you think uh how you think man here, right we are right here in Mark, Mark chapter 8. Um verse 7. It says, And they had a few small fishes, and he blessed and commanded to set them before them. So they did eat and were filled and took up the broken meat that was left, seven baskets. And they that had eaten were about 4,000. And he sent them away. Yeah. 4,000. You must say, no, it's 5,000. No, it happened twice. He fed a flock of 5,000, okay, with five loaves of bread and two fishes. And then he fed a flock of 4,000 right here with what? With a few small fishes and Seven loaves of bread. So yeah, these are Jews that clearly didn't reject him. They think it was getting on now. They rejected him and they was playing him. They just wanted to get some food. Man, they followed him around. Let's go up here, verse one. It says, and this is uh, Mark eight and one. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat. This is a great multitude following him. Okay, this is the same great multitude that's before the throne of Ahia. By the way, okay, this as far as the people. All right, in, in, in Revelation chapter 7. Okay, I think it's Revelation chapter 7, verse 4. Okay, the great multitude of many peoples, nations, kindreds, and tongues. This is that's Israel. It says, and, and, and the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Yeshua called his disciples unto him and said unto him, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. Wow. So they rejected him, but they followed him for three days. Wow, that, that's some. Real strong will to to hate somebody, you want to put somebody to death, but you follow him around for three days, mind you. You I didn't say if you follow me, I'm gonna feed you in three days. He was teaching them, and they said, "Well, they were so blessed and 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 happy and astounded by the doctrine and the miracles he was doing. They didn't want to miss the thing he was doing. They followed this dude straight, following him. All now we not leaving. We we sticking with you, right? All praise your name, Ahayah Bashim Yishai. So, um. Verse 3 says, and if I send them away fast into their own houses, they will faint by the way, for divers of them came from far. So you got people that came from everywhere in Judea was following them, man. They didn't re reject your shot, man. You know, they said, man, I'm going to feed them, man. I'm going to feed my sheep, right? So now we're going to go into some deep things. We established, man, how the most High feels about the Gentiles, the other nations, and we established that the Israel, Israel just tearing down a false doctrine that they did not reject the shy. We established that Ahia and the Son and the Ruach, well, that's all bearing of each other, and the same spirit was given to Paul and Paul went to teach. So we still got to reveal well, why is the word Gentile on the scripture and why was Paul talking to these people and why is he saying these things in reference to our, 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 our salvation being given to the Gentiles. Why is he saying he no more going to the Jews and going to the Gentiles? We're going to break all that down right now. First, we got to go back to the law. And we're going to break down some stuff for you today, all right? We're going to start in Exodus, all right? Exodus chapter 12 and verse 43, all right? And we're going to be breaking some of this stuff down in the Strong's, y'all. For real. We're going to break some of this stuff down in the Strong's for you to know this stuff, right? All praise your name, Ahayah Bashim Yashai. All right, so we got... Exodus 12 and 43. And I said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There, there shall no stranger eat thereof. Right? So, what's a stranger? Okay, according to the Old Testament, what's a stranger? Right? It says right here. It says right here, man. Y'all bear with me, man. We're going to get through this, man. Y'all going to see with your eyes, man. All right, right there. This is Exodus 12 and 43. No stranger shall eat of the Passover thereof. You see that? Now, all we're going to do is select this right here, and we're going to get the Hebrew Strong's meaning, right? That's what we're going to do, right? Now, this is what you're going to understand. 
All right, now we're going to scroll up. Hold on, go back to it. Right here, Exodus 12 and 43. We're right there. Now, we're going to go to the word stranger. No stranger can eat thereof, right? What it says, Ben, H1121, right? Now, H1121. I'm going to show y'all that there's more than one definition of a stranger here, right? And the way you get the understanding of which stranger or who it is, is according to the law, all right? So what does it say? Um, H 1121, right? And what does it say? Son, grandson, child, member of a group. Son, male, child, grandson, child, right? Uh, a son in the widest sense. Grandson, subject, nation, right? Now, now, right? Age 11 and 21. This is what I wanted y'all to see. Now, what does the scripture say in that verse? It says, And I have said unto Moses and Aaron, Thus is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Because the Passover was for Israel. You understand? So that makes pretty clear sense, right? The Passover is a representation of of us celebrating the deliverance of the Most High delivered us when the angel passed over our houses. We ate the Passover lamb and put the blood on the door post. We were in Egypt the last night we were there. Strangers have no part in that. They don't know what's going on with that. They are not to eat of the Passover as the scripture uh, um, declares in, in law. But we drop down, right? We're going to break it. We drop down to same chapter Exodus 12 and 48, it says, and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, that means he's chilling out with you in your house, and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover unto a higher, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. What? And he shall be as one as that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. What's going on here, y'all? Okay. And what is the foundation of what this is saying? First off, the foundation is the Passover is in the law. The law is only given to Israel. Let's, let's, de let's declare that right now. All right. Let's declare that right now. Okay. Let's declare that 100%. This is Psalm 147 and 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Ahiah. Right? So there's no way in the world, right? According to scripture, there's no way in the world that this stranger that's about to take up the Passover after he got circumcised is is a, um, a Gentile because that will make the scriptures broken. It just said no stranger can eat of it. So what is this telling you? That that stranger is a Gentile and I'm going to prove it right now. Right? I'm going to prove it. Right? So we're going to go right back right back into to the Strong's. We just looked up that one. Strangers. It's age 11, 21. Right? So we go we go over to Exodus 12 and 48, right there in front of you. Exodus 12 and 48, right there. See that? 12 and 48. And we select. Oh, man. Go right back up to it. It's rocky, y'all. Bear with me, man. 12 and 48, right there. Right? Come on, quick go. All right. And what do we see? We see. Okay, it says, and to the most high, all his males to be circumcised, and let them come near and keep the Passover. So let's go back up to this word, stranger. Let's see what it says. And when a stranger, oh, what what is that? H1616. So there's a different type, there's another type of stranger in the Bible. Why is the Hebrew origin of the word different? 
because these are two different strangers. They're not the same stranger or the definition to be the same, right? 816. Understand, being that this stranger can keep the Passover, this definition of a stranger is an Israelite because he gets to keep the Passover. 81616, right? And it says a sojourner, right? A sojourner, a temporary inhabitant, a newcomer, right? Y'all see what it says. A, a newcomer lacking inherited rights, a foreigner, foreigners, of foreigners in Israel, though conceded rights. So what, what is not being understood, right? In the law, which is what Paul has learned in, is that there were some Israelites that didn't live in the land of Israel but will come back to keep the feast. They will come back to, to sojourn, to visit their brethren, all right? And they will be sojourning, meaning if you are traveling and you can't make it to the next day, in our law, you're supposed to let that brother come in your house, wash his feet, give him some food, let him spend a night there. That was the brotherly love we had in Israel, man, toward each other. That's a sojourner. He's a stranger to your, your inherited land. He's a stranger to you because he's not from your house, but he's still your brethren. This is why when you come to the land, it says you got to make sure you circumcise because, again, circumcision is only for Israel. Circumcision is not for any other nation. So this Israelite, by way of the law only being given to Israel, and this stranger by the law only being given to Israel, is an Israelite. He's just called a stranger. That's not defining him of his nationality. That is defining him of his living status. Okay? Read it again. So this, this is Exodus chapter 12, verse 43. And Haya said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. The first ordinance of the Passover is what? There shall no stranger eat thereof. And we show you that was H eleven twenty one. All right? Jump down to verse 48. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, when you got a, a, a foreigner, Israelite foreigner, sojourning with you, what it say? And we'll keep the Passover. And you're going to keep the Passover at your house unto the Most High. Let all his males be circumcised. And then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Verse 49, they're going to give you more understanding. One law shall be to him that is home born, born in the land, and unto the stranger that shall join among you. So the one that wasn't born in Israel, that's a stranger to the land by, by, by where he lives. He's still in Israel like by blood. He's identified in the, in the whole law as a stranger, H, 1616. And we're going to show you a couple more. We can't just show one. Let's go to Exodus 22 now, right? Exodus 22, Exodus 22, and 21. It says, thou shalt neither vex a stranger, nor oppress him. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. All right, so let's see what type of stranger this is, man. Right? Yeah, y'all, we're going to go into this, man. We're going to go all the way into this, and we're going to get the true understanding, man. Right? Exodus. 22. And we read, we read verse 21. So let's get this right now. It's 22. And 21. Right there. That's the 22 and 21. You see it? Thou shalt need a vex a stranger, right? 22 and 21. Now we're going to select it. 22 and 21. Right here. It's going to break it down for us. Right? Thou shalt neither vex a stranger. What is that? H 1616. So that's an Israelite. So the father said, you're not going to vex. Let's see what, what does vex mean. Right? Let's get that. Vex. H 32 and 38. Let's see what that is, man. All right? Thou shalt not vex a stranger, nor oppress him. Right? So let's see what, what it means to vex a stranger. Just so we know what the father's saying. Right, oppress, suppress, treat violently, mistreat, vex, which means to anger, do wrong, to oppress, to suppress, to treat violently. Right, so the most I say, man, you're not gonna vex a stranger, don't do him like that. 
Why? Because the age of 16 and 16, stranger, that's your brother. All right, now let's see if the same rules apply later on in the verse. Right? Let's go to um Exodus 20. Let's go to Leviticus 25 now. Right? Leviticus 25. And let's see how these other strangers get, how these others get treated. This is Leviticus 25. Stay on point. Let's stay on cue. All right. 25, 17, repeats it again. Ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear higher. Ye shall fear thy power, for I am higher, your power, right? Now, let's go over to verse 35. And if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him, yea, though he be a stranger, or a sojourner, so either one or the other, that he may live with thee. You see that, y'all? You see that? Now let's go down. Let's go down. Verse 39. I said we started verse 38. This is still Leviticus 25, verse 38. I am a higher your power, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan to, and to be your power. Oh, let's make sure we... Let's make sure we bring that Leviticus out so y'all know that, that what type of stranger that is. Leviticus chapter 25. All right. All right, so we still read Leviticus 25 and 29. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxing poor, mind you, it just, this is all reference to the, the brother that waxing poor in verse 35, though he be a stranger or a sojourner. Let's see what it says. Thy brother that dwelleth with thee waxing poor and be sold unto thee. So now he's a, he's a servant. Thou should not compel him to serve as a bond servant. What's a bond servant, y'all? Do y'all know what a bond you know the difference between a servant and a bond servant? We're gonna see right now. But as a hired servant, right? And as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee. So if you're an Israelite servant, you can only serve for a maximum of six years. Then after seven years, years you leave you out. You about you about you can go back free to your inheritance, to your land, whatever you was doing, right? This is a difference between a stranger that is a servant from Israel, and then if we're gonna read about a stranger that is a bond servant that can never be from Israel, because he's giving you the difference right now. But the point is, is you reference both of them as strangers, right? Leviticus twenty-five. And um, 35, so we can get the definition on what, right? This is, this is, hold on, Leviticus, right? 25 and 35, right? 25 and 35 right here. So we can get the definition on the stranger, right? 25, lock it, y'all. Lock it, y'all. <clears throat> We're going to get this word out, right? Says, and if thy brother, that's Israel, be waxing poor and fall in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him, yea, though he be a stranger. What does that say? Age 16, 16. We know we showed as Israel. Sojourner. 84.53. That's Israel. Keep that in mind. If this if the stranger is Israel, then this sojourner. 84.53 is Israel, right? Now, let's see right here. As we read down, it says, let's, let's read it out the script. Let's read it out the script. Let's jump down. Let me see. Verse 40, but as a hired servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee as you're serving to the year of Jubilee. Verse 41, and then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children, with him and shall return unto his own family and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. All right? This is an Israelite stranger. For they are my servants which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Right? So they don't get to they don't get to be sold. Like that's another difference. This stranger as a servant, he gets to go out free. But we're gonna read about the other servant that is a bond servant and how and how it differs, and they're both strangers, right? Let's see. 
Verse 43, thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shall fear the most high, but shall fear thy power. Verse 44, both thy bondmen, so your slave men and thy bondmaid, slave woman, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen. You see that? So these slaves, these servants, which are of the heathen, which we got, let's look up heathen. Let's make sure we know heathen can't be an Israelite. Let's look that up, right? That was verse 44, right? Right there. Leviticus 25 and 44, right? Right here. Right there. Come on, quit playing. Right? Of the heathen. Right? It says, Thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have of the heathen. What is that? Goy. You ever heard that term? Goyim? That's the Gentile. Right there, Hebrew. What's that? 1471. And there's a, and there's a Gentile definition. That also says goy. I think it's 1472 or 14, 1482, right? So this is giving you the clear understanding. There's strangers that are Israel and there's strangers or non-Israelites that are, are, are also slaves. But the slaves that are non-Israelites, they're bondmen. And let's break down what it says about those. Verse 44. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shall have shall be of the heathen that are round about you of them shall ye buy bondmen and, and bondmaids moreover of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you of them shall ye buy now let's look up that children of the strangers right that's another word strangers so let's go all right leviticus 25 and 45 right there right so it says children of the strangers let's see if this is going to continue, you know, to be a true breakdown of what a stranger is, right? Children of, let's see what it says. Moreover, of the children of the strangers, what does that say? 8453. We just went over the heathen term. That was what? Right here. In, uh, in the verse before, that was what this say right here. This strangers is 84.53, right? Y'all see that, right? Let me make sure y'all see it. Of the strangers, right there, right? 84.53, right there. Now, we're going to go up one verse just so you can make sure you can put this precept is with what this heathen is. That's a stranger. It says, of the strangers that are around about you, that's who you should buy your servants from. So we're going to see 8453, if that lines up with this word heathen. Right? Leviticus 25 and 45. Right? This is, okay, it's 45. We're trying to go to, we're trying to go to um, 44, Shalakia. Leviticus 25 and 44, we went up, we went down to 45. So if we go right here, remember, so we got the, the name, we got the, um, this is the heathen, it's Goy. Nation people, usually non non Hebrew, right? So, what we're doing is we're showing that the strangers that are of Israel, you can't rule them with bigger, you can't vex them, right? You can't um, sell them when you're done with them. You gotta let them go free. But this stranger said you can buy of the heathen that are round about you, which are not Israelites. And then of them shall you build bonds, bond maids. 
bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you. For the children of the strangers, right? That's plural. That is plural. Four. Yeah, that's plural for the non nations. Let's go over it just to make sure. We don't want to skip nothing, man. We ain't skipping nothing, right? The children of the strangers, right there. That's what we're looking up. Children of the strangers, right there in Leviticus 25 and 45. What did it say? 84, 53. So this is another definition for strangers, by the way. You had H1121. You had H1616. Now you got H84 and 53. There's three definitions of strangers now. Okay? Now this one is just in the plural. So, you know, it says, uh, Tushwa, mighty dweller, but not outlandish, especially as distinguished from a native citizen, a temporary inmate, <laughs> wow, or merged lodger, resident, alien, foreigner, inhabitant, sojourner, stranger. So what we're showing is different definitions, man, of strangers, right? And so... This stranger, let's finish up. It says, verse 44, more with the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you. Of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. So, this stranger, you own him. The other stranger, you got to let him go after your jubilee. So, verse 46, and ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children. So, they don't go out after your jubilee. They get passed down to your children. And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. And they shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, who's also a stranger or a sojourner, we read in, in Leviticus 25 and 35, ye shall not rule over one another with rigor. Wow. So you can rule with rigor over a bond servant, but over a, 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 a stranger, this stranger, you can't rule over him with vex. What, what, what rigor and oppressor. You see this? These are two different strangers, right? Verse 47, and if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee or to the stock of the stranger's family. Understand that, y'all. You're hearing about stocks and bonds. I told you a long time ago. This is talking about people that are bought right here. Servants forever. It's the same thing going on when we were taken off the slave ships and sold, okay? We are their property forever. And we are the stocks and bonds that are bought, sold, and traded on the stock market. It's us, y'all. It's our worth. It's our value. You've seen it right here at the word. You read it again. And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee, and thy, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee or to the stock of the stranger's family, right? Because we become the property. That's why they put their last name on us. Now we're the property of that family. We're the stock of that family. That's why they label our name. We're a part of them now. They own us now, right? Just showing y'all the stocks and bonds, man. Verse 48. After that, he is sold. He may be redeemed again of he may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him. So one stranger, which is an Israelite, we just went over, 816 can be redeemed after he sold himself unto the stranger, right? And he got to pay the overplus if it's a couple years up into the year Jubilee, or he go off free at the year Jubilee. Um, or he just pay, um, either he pay, if he's two years before the year Jubilee, he pay the price due ball for him, and then he paid the price for a servant for those last two years. If it's up to the year of Jubilee, then he just pay that price straight up, right? And he redeem his brother back. But a, a bond servant, you can never redeem him. You don't get him back, right? Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So we just proved that there's one stranger that can eat the Passover, and then there's a stranger that can't eat the Passover. They're both strangers now. And then there's one stranger that you can rule over him with rigor. And he'll be your slave um, forever and inheritance of your children. And if you don't want him, you can sell him to somebody else. And then there's another stranger that he's only can be, you can't rule over him with rigor. He only serves you as a hired servant. And 
he goes free at the year of Jubilee. These are all strangers, man. Right? So what do we show you? There's one type of stranger. And guess what? There's one type of stranger in the old. Then there's if there's more than one type of stranger in the old, then there's more than one type of Gentile in the new. This is what we're breaking down to, y'all. We'll get one more, man. Let's get Leviticus 25. Let's go right back to Leviticus 25. Um, go back up to verse 35. And if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. Verse 36. Thou shalt take thou no usury of him or increase, but fear thy power that thy brother may live with thee. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury, nor lend him thy victuals for increase. So you can't charge taxes when you lend this stranger some money. You can't do that, right? Why? Because he's your brother. Because he's an Israelite. Okay? Even though he's called a stranger, he's your brother. Right? Now let's go, uh, let's go to Deuteronomy 23. Alright, so one stranger you can't Exact tax on them. But let's see how these other strangers you can, right? Deuteronomy 23 and 19. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. Usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon you. Unto a stranger, or well, it just said in another scripture that your brother that's a stranger, you can exact usury. But now verse 20 says, Unto a stranger, thou mayest lend usury upon usury. You see, there's, there's nothing confusing here. It's just, I understand, there's two strangers in the book. It's just that simple. Let's look up this stranger. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the that a higher thy power may bless thee, and all that thou settest thy hand to in the land where thou goest to possess. All right, so let's look up just for, you know, just for a teaching point to make sure that this stranger, man, is a H- uh, 1121. He's got to be at age 1121. Because if he's at age 16 to 16 and he's a stranger that you can um, exact usury on, then the scriptures got to be broken. They have to be, right? Deuteronomy chapter 23. Okay, we get that. And mind you, y'all, this is what the scriptures mean when it says, study to show thyself approved unto a high. This is what the scriptures mean when it says that you got to be learned, man. You got to know what this word say, man, right? Let's go to verse 23 and 20. All right, we already established that the stranger in, uh, in Leviticus is Israel, right? And he's 8, 16, 16. So right here we got unto a stranger shall thou use usury, right? So y'all, right? So we're going to see. What it says with in regards to this stranger right here, all right? Let's talk about this stranger. Oh, hold on. Let's get that one. All right. All praise to the most high for y'all that's enduring, man. All right. Unto a stranger. What does it say? Unto a stranger. Not cur. Wow. This is another definition for a stranger. What is going on here? How many definitions? All right. This is a Gentile one. And we'll, we'll, we'll bring it out real quick. Unto, unto a stranger, you can lend usury, right? So this is not cur, right? Let me show you right quick. All right. Foreign alien, foreign, foreign, foreign woman, harlot, unknown, unfamiliar. All right. Um, let's look at some of the examples that this is used in the scripture, right? Exodus 18 and 3. And her two sons, of which the name of one was Gershom, he said, I have been an alien in a strange land, right? So this is why Moses named Gershom um, stranger, right? Right here in this script, because he knew he was a stranger in a foreign land. This is an this is a comparative definition of the stranger that you can lend usury upon. Okay, Moses was a stranger. All right, to the land where he was at on the Midianites, and now that same definition is congruent 
with the stranger that you can land usury upon, right? So we're showing you, man. Pretty clear, man. There's a couple more, but, you know, for time's sake, we're already over an hour. I want y'all to know that uh, there's a stranger that can keep the Passover and a stranger that can't keep the Passover. There's a stranger you can rule over with vigor and sell him. And there's a stranger that you can't rule over with vigor and you can't sell him. And there's a stranger also that you can um, tax. And there's a stranger that you can't tax. So if there's only one type of Gentile, one type of stranger, then um, we got issues here because there's contradictions in the scripture. No, there's not because you got some strangers that are foreign Israelites, foreigners, just like foreigners, and some that are actual non-Israelites. And this term, this phraseology does not change in the New Testament, y'all. All right. Um, Rock the, you know, y'all for enduring that, right? Now let's also. Let's get something else. We got Deuteronomy chapter 29, right? Deuteronomy chapter 29 and 10. Because some people go here and say, look, there was a covenant for the strangers to get with us the whole time. What you talking about right there in the covenant? Okay, let's read it. Deuteronomy 29 and 10. Ye stand this day all of you before I your power, your captains of your tribes, your elders and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp from the hero of wood unto the jar of water. So everyone's ready to say right now, there's a stranger right there. Now, as you we've been going over the study, if that if that stranger is age 16, 16, which is which goes along with all the other strangers in the law that can partake in the lawful things, then we already know. We already know that that is a um, We know that that is a um, that that is a foreign. Um, we know that is an Israelite, man. If if he's twenty, if he's eleven twenty one, or if he's fourteen seventy one, then we know this is a Gentile. But if he's sixteen sixteen, he's an Israelite, man. How? Because according to the law that was only given to Israel, the eight sixteen sixteen stranger is the only one that can keep the Passover. He's the only one that you can't offer taxes on. He's the only one that you can't rule over with vigor, right? Just to name those three, right? Now, we're in Deuteronomy chapter 29. And we're going to look up the stranger that this covenant was made with. And we're going to see, <laughs> we're going to see if it's of another nation or if it's of Israel, right? Deuteronomy 29 and 10, right here, right? Deuteronomy 29 and 10. Let's see. 10 or oh, an 11. All right. Let's make sure which verse it is. Deuteronomy and the stranger. Deuteronomy 29 and 11. Okay, and the stranger that is within thy gate, the hewer of wood. So let's look at that. All right. Let's look at it. Come on, quit playing with me. All right. And what it say? Your little ones, your stranger. Oh. Right there, 8, 16, 16. He's an Israelite. Can't deny it, man. All right? So, understand, that's just the thorough study that you do because the scripture is written originally in Hebrew and Greek. So, you look in the Hebrew and you see stranger, 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 and you shouldn't jump the gun. You got to be, you know what? Let's look it up right quick. And as you see that we're doing, the covenant still is only for Israel, which lines up with scripture. All right? With Israel. All right, precept right quick, man. It's Psalms uh, 105 and 7. He is a higher our power possessor. His judgments are in all the earth. He has redeemed, he has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Covenant is only with Israel. So anybody trying to insert right here that that's a stranger, that's horrible, horrible plight and horrible, you know, agenda and prerogative to try to put that in the scripture. That is garbage, man. We just showed you that stranger is an Israelite foreigner. All right, so let's move on, man. We still got a lot. Let's go back and let's check this covenant, man, because a lot of people say, you know, we're in a new covenant, right? A new covenant, man. See, the breakdown and understanding of what Yeshai did 
is not in reference to the actual covenant. All right. We what we matter of fact, let's go back. Let's go back, man, and finish that up. All right. Deuteronomy 29. Okay, so you can know what the covenant is. It says, verse 12, Deuteronomy 29 and 12, that thou shouldest enter into covenant with Ahiah thy power and into his oath, which Ahiah thy power maketh with thee this day, that he established thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be to thee a power. So we're his people, and he's our power. He didn't say anything about anything, anybody else. As he has said unto thee, and as he has sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, neither would you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with them that stand here, but with him that standeth here with us this day before I our power, and also with him that is not here with us today. People say, oh, that means Gentiles. Man, that means the offspring of the same people. That's all that's talking about. Meaning, meaning like we just read in Psalms uh, 105 that the covenant and do it forever. These the people that are right there that are hearing these words, the covenant, yeah, it's still with you, it's still with us, Israel. Okay, even though we weren't standing there that day, the covenant is still with us, man. Right? So this covenant is predicated on us keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. And if we keep them, we get blessings. If we break them, we get under curses. It's simple as that, man. All right. As simple as that. On this Deuteronomy 29, 25. Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of a higher power of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. So we, the covenant is made with us. And the only thing that can be like not in effect is us not keeping it. OK, it's always there for us to take hold of and follow, you know, by the, by the long suffering of the most high. You know, it's always there for us to take hold of. But it ain't never just went away. All right. So this covenant, as, you, as we just read, is what Israel. Now, let's read a little bit more about the covenant, man. All right? Because we just read who was for just now. Now let's precept that. All right? Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith I, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Where's everybody else? Where's the stranger? Where's the Gentile? Where's the heathen? Where they're at? They're not there. Oh, man. You know, they're, they're there in a sense of the house of Israel, they were known as Gentiles, right? Letting the cat out of the bag a little bit, right? They were there as the house of Israel because the house of Israel was known as Gentiles, okay? This is who Paul teaching, and we're going to show you through the word of the Most High. Verse 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the, I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said the Most High, so... The first the covenant we just read is the one he made with our fathers, which our forefathers broke. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. And he says house of Israel because the nation was split in two. But when a new covenant comes, we're going to be one stick, one nation before him again. No more being two nations, right? And as it says with the house of Israel, it doesn't say this new covenant is going to be with anybody else. So all that... Um, I'm, I'm saved. I'm, we're under the new covenant. We're not. We're not in the new covenant right now. Why? I'm going to show you why. But it shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the high. I will put my law in their inward parts. Let's stop right there. The law was only given to Israel. All right? That's what the covenant is. The law is to keep it, is the contractual agreement predicated on blessings and curses if you keep the law. That's what the covenant is. So he's going to put the law in our inward parts so we don't break it no more. And we know it because the middlemen, okay, your teachers, okay, your elders, your false prophets have taught you wrong. And so now he's going to eliminate any way of us blame, putting the blame on anybody else. I'm going to put the law up in your heart, man. Hmm? I'm going to put the law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their power and they shall be my people. Right? Show y'all something, man. Show y'all something, man. This doctrine, right here, the Christian doctrine. You see this, y'all? Y'all to see this. Man made religions, y'all. All right? This is a popular flyer that's always bought, passed out, man. You see on there in the background, you say IUIC, you know, one of the camps out there teaching, right? 
This is showing you the origin. Let me get it close to y'all. The origin of all your Christian doctrines. Screenshot, take a picture of it, y'all. All right? These are the ones that gave you Sunday worship. These are the ones that gave you a brown hair, blue eyed, um, so called white man as the Messiah. These are the ones that taught you the universe of salvation after they beat you back out and put you in slavery. All right? This is the origin of why you believe that this thing is universal. Okay, mind you, Yashala, we done put, put in slavery, man. All we want to do, we done been done so wrong, of course, according to our, our, our actions, that we just want things to be equal. We just want everything to be fair, all right? But the most I said, he made us above all people on the face of the earth, right? But being that they know that we just wanted some equality, they were able to take our word, right, and re-educate us according to a doctrine that will keep us from looking at them and noticing that they are our enemy. And keep us, uh, keep us thinking that they're actually the Most High because they gave you the Messiah in their um, appearance, and their image, and their likeness. You understand? So just look at these facts right quick. Okay, you already screenshot them. I'm just ready to you. John Smith, right? Created the Baptist religion, Southern Baptist, in 1608. This was the first one that came out, right? This is the first one they used to deceive our people and give Sunday worship. Right? And give a Caucasian Messiah, right? And to tell you that Yeshua, I love, um, I love everybody in the world, and we're all equal, and we're all his children. This was the first Christian doctrine that started being taught, what, 1608, right? Then you got Charles Parham, created a Pentecostal religion. This is the one I came up in, in what? In 1901. How, oh, and this is a real dummy one. How, how, how is somebody going to get salvation between 1901? All right, if the Pentecostal doctrine is the true doctrine, right? I don't know how strong that delusion is. I know it's very strong. You got to ask yourself, you're in a Pentecostal um, Christian church. How is somebody going to get saved, right? Before 1901, there was no such thing as a Pentecostal Christian before 1901, you guys. Hamashiach died. About 17, almost 1,750 years ago. Okay, but if we go according to the, the uh, you know, the Julian calendar, he died over 2,000 years ago. But only 100 years ago was it offered a salvation? What about the previous 1,900 years before that? How was somebody supposed to get saved, y'all? Y'all got to think about this stuff. Everyone I read, y'all think about this. Joseph Smith, okay, he was the one, he's the one over the Mormons, man. Created the Mormons in religion in the 1830. Okay, just showing you. Charles Taze Russell created the J Dubs, right? Jehovah's Witnesses religion in 1872. Brand new religion. Mind you, you shot and died over 2,000 years ago. These is brand new religions. William Miller created the Seven Day Adventist religion in 1863. All right. These are the people that taught you that you're in the new covenant already. That everyone's already all good right now. Why? Wow, to keep you asleep so you don't be able to partake in the gathering of these scattered people that the Most High only cares about and chose to bring and put back in the land. All right. These are the religions I'm giving. And guess, and guess what? All five of the news I read to you, they're all of the Caucasian persuasion of Edom. And more importantly, they all are Luciferians, man. They're all 33 degree Masons, man. All right. I'm going to have to do a lesson on the Masons so y'all can know what I mean when I say they're Mason, man. They serve Satan, bro. Through secrecy and, and religious uh, practices and rites that they do, man. All right? And they reign over all cities. There's a Mason at Sonic Temple in every city in the, in the world, man, in the nation, man. They're all over the place, man. Let me like, explain to you what a Mason does, man. You say, well, they serve Lucifer. How they teach you the Bible? I'm going to show you. They look at the communities, all right, and see what it is that the communities seek and force their spiritual uh, motivation in the Bible, and they master the doctrine that is being, um, that's prevalent in that area, and they put their twists on it. They don't come with a, a, a different book. I mean, they don't come with a different um, Messiah. They use the same one, and they twist the understanding of them, all right? So the, 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 the inception of all these denominations that I show you of the Christian church were all taught by people who serve Satan, y'all. This is true. I just showed y'all 
Look them all up, man. Some of them people falsely predicted the return of Yeshai. All right. In the Watchtower uh, uh, organization, which is what the Jehovah Witnesses deal with. Um, even the Seventh-day Witness, Seventh-day Adventists, uh, there's a woman called Ellen G. White, bro. She tried to be a, a prophet and say when you shot gonna come back, then she got it wrong. She actually, I think they predicted it like two times. Right? Mind you, this stuff is it was planned after our captivity, after the children of Israel from Judea, the last remnant, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, were taken into captivity. That's when these religions popped up. Before that, it wasn't none of this stuff, y'all. This is what you gotta understand. You gotta care about that, man. We're not in the new covenant, man. Jeremiah 31, 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, the most high. Nobody's going to be teaching the word when we're in the new covenant. Nobody's going to be teaching that no more. I just read it to you. Read it to you. Why? Because it says, They, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith I am. I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So the most I said, when the new covenant starts, no one's going to teach the Bible no more. Everyone's going to know it already because he's going to write it all the way in our heart, the whole, the whole law, everything. So understand, if you're teaching the Bible, if somebody is still teaching the word, there's no way you're in the new covenant. Thus said the scripture, and it's repeated again in, in, in um, Hebrews chapter 8, all right, 8, 9, 10. Tells you the same thing. Now, since we're not in the new covenant and we showed you now what the covenant is, let's get a re-understanding of why Yeshua did come then. What is he really doing then, man? If we're not in the new covenant and the, the new covenant, um, the new testament in his blood is not a reference to other nations, let's see what, it, what let's get out of his mouth what he said. Okay, out of his mouth. Now, mind you, he the one that went to Paul and talked to Paul and told Paul what to do. Himself, right? In the light, right? This is Matthew, right? All right, we can, we can just hit these Matthew ones right quick. Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Who are his people, right? This is Matthew 2 and 6. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, that's Yeshua, according to Isaiah, that shall rule my people, Israel. So who are Yeshua's people? Israel. So who is he coming to save? I shall, he shall save his people from their sins. What is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. Right? He who sin is transgression is also the law. Right? What is, what is, who is the law given to? The nation of Israel. It wasn't given to any other nation on earth. So it's, it narrows it down real, real good for you. This is why they want you to just learn from the New Testament forward. They don't want you getting an understanding we just broke down of who the salvation is for, who Yeshua is, what tribe he's from, what prophecies of him even coming into the earth, right? Let's go to Matthew uh, 15, right? Matthew 15. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of Christians, a lot of people think the universe of salvation is like to go here. Um, Matthew 15, 21. Then Yeshua went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Zidon, two Hamite countries. And behold, a woman of Canaan, a woman of Canaan, okay, she's from there, came out of the coast and cried un un unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, have mercy on me, O master, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. What? He didn't answer her. That's kind of rude, don't you think? Of this Yeshua that loves everybody. He loves everybody, right? He answered, right? He ignored her. And the disciples came and we saw him saying, send her away. For she cried that first. Then the disciples came up behind her, man. Tell her, get away from her, man. Tell her, get up out of here, man. Why would they do this stuff? Nobody wants to care about the initial encounter. Okay? If he's out, if he's in salvation and he's begging and she's referencing him, thou son of David. Mercy on me. Why would he brush off that courteous inquiry? Right? Why would he do that? Why? But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who are the lost sheep? 
Let us make it clear. He said he's only sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? So who are the lost sheep? This is why they don't want you reading the old or learning from the old to the new because then you're going to know who the lost sheep is. Oh no, not a false, day, false doctrine shut down. Jeremiah 50 and 6. My people have been lost sheep. Very clear. Who, who is the highest people? Israel. So he's only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost sheep is Israel and the house of Israel. He told you twice, I'm only sent to Israel. Then came she and worshiped him saying, Master, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meant to take the children's bread, the children of Israel, and cast it to dogs. What is the children's bread? John, St. John, chapter 6, and verse 48. Start at verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believed on me had everlasting life. This is what Yeshai said. Verse 48. I am that bread of life. So you're not going to take this bread of life, of everlasting life, it's not, it's not meant to give it to who? What do you say? To cast it to dogs. All right? Because what? In the Old Testament, these Hamites were, were called, referenced as dogs. All right? That's all the spirit. Let's get that. I'm going to show you. All right? That these Hamites were dogs. All right? This is... um. Exodus 11 and 7, right? In the law, let's see who, what, who's a dog, right? Exodus 11 and 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast. You're not going to be running your mouth against us because we're the Most High Chosen. We are holy. That you may know how that the Most High have put a difference between the Egyptians and and Israel, right? So e Egypt, Mizraim, is the son of Ham. Zidon and Tyre. You know what? Let's check that. Okay, let's, let's, let's check that, man. Let's see who they are, man. All right? This is how we study, right? We go to First Chronicles, right? And Mizraim, beget. Mizraim is the term for Egypt. Um, this is First Chronicles 1 and 11. And Mizraim, in fact, let's start at 8. And the sons of Ham, Cush, jump down to verse 9. And the sons of Cush, uh, no, sons of Ham, verse 8. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Put, and Cain. Verse 11. And Mizraim beget Ludum, and Anamum, and Lehibum, and uh, Na, Nafratum, and Paterson, and Kalasim, of who came Philistines, and Capitum. And Cain, and beget Zidon, their firstborn and Heth, right? So these are Hamites, right? I, I was trying to make sure Zidon was not a female. But just let you know that the Hamites are known as dogs, okay? And we can call this to all the heathen, man, because they're non Israelites. The most I said, all of them are nothing. All of them are less than nothing. All of them are vanity. All of them are like a drop that falls to the vessel. All of them are the small dust of the balance. This is how he feels about all the nations. This is why you're shy. Brushing this lady off, like, what's she saying? What's she, who's she talking to? Okay? This is why the disciples are like, get her out of here. Okay? This is why you try to say, man, it's not meant, man, to cast the bread of life into you dogs, man. It's not for you. It's the, for the children. Who are the children of Israel? I'm not sent, but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, let's get Matthew chapter 10, right? And let's see what he told you about the apostle. Chapter 10. And... Verse 5, these 12, Yeshai, sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Here we go. Let's strong search this term, Gentile. And let's see. <laughs> let's see what's going on, man. Let's see what's going on. Oh, praise your name, Ahai Bashi Yeshai, right? You know, man, we glory in truth. You know, we are joyful, man, that we got the revelation, man. You know, that we're not deceived no more, man. The most high, man. He revealing the understanding, man. And we glory in this stuff, man. Okay? We thankful, man. The most high showing us this stuff, man. This is Matthew chapter 10, right? It says, um, is it? Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. These twelve be shy sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. He feels the same way as his father. Don't go to these non-Israelites. And into any of the city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. 
but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Wow. Same thing in the way his father feels. He's only down with Israel. Verse 7. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? Preach this to the Israelites. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Understand. Samaritans, right? Yeah, there's a city in the northern kingdom of Israel, right? It was the capital of the northern kingdom, right? Which was called Israel or Ephraim, right? So, you're going to learn that the northern kingdom of Israel was there. And they were exiled out of the land because of their disobedience and their idolatry, right? So, the most high, so Yeshua was saying, don't we even go to them because they were not the most high's people no more. Right? But they were called back. And these are the people who Paul in the foreign ministry to. Now I'm going to show you. Right? Go down to where the Gentile. Now, this is Matthew 10 and 5. Right? Matthew 10 and 5. As you see, right? Go not into the way of the Gentiles, neither in the end of the Samaritans. But go ye rather to the lost sheep of the house of Yahshua Allah. Right? Matthew 10 and 5. So we push it. We push it. All right. And we're going to see. Let's get an understanding of what the New Testament matter for a Gentile is, right? Or into the way of the Gentiles. 1484 ethnos, right? Let's, let's get the definition. All right. Let's make it clear. Now, mind you. When you see there's more than one Gentile, then the way you break down which Gentile is which is according to what is established in the law that salvation is for Israel. We read that in Isaiah uh, 46 and 13 and um, Psalms uh, 14 and 7. And we read Yeshia right here. And there's a plethora of more scriptures throughout the whole book. All right. So then you this is how you're going to be able to break down what type of Gentile it is. Right. So, mind you, it says, ethnos, and let's remember the number 1484. Don't go to these. These are our, um, it says a multitude, get, this, get the definition, a multitude, whether of men or beasts, right? A company, right? Troop, swarm, right? So, let's remember that. Let's remember that number, 1484, right? Let's keep going. Let's go to John, right? So as you see right there, Amasha commanded the 12. And he teaches the same thing that his father teaches. So he told the 12 now, don't go to the Gentiles, go to the lost sheep house of Israel, right? Let's go to John 7, St. John 7 and 34, right? It says, ye shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Verse 35, then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Ooh, you see that? Now, when my script on the margin, it says a Gentile means free. Now, let's see. Let's see if this is the same Gentile 14, what? If this is the same 1484 uh, Gentile? Or this is a different Gentile. Let's see it, man. All right, so we're going to type it in. John, right? Chapter 5. And we're going to see what's good. All right? That was ethnos. 1484 ethnos. 1484 ethnos, right? So we're going to go. John. Oh, it's locked, y'all. It's 7. 7. Let me go up. St. John. All right. St. John 7 and 35, right? Right here. St. John 7, 35. See that? Will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles, right? So, right here. Y'all see how diligent I am, man, to teach this truth, man. I want y'all to know this stuff, man. Right? Right here. Now, 
Let's go up. Let's look to see what the time for Gentiles is. Among themselves where they will he go, that he shall not find him where he go to the dispersed of the Gentiles. What does it say? And teach the Gentiles. Both of them say 1672. Wow, it's a different type of Gentile. Wow. So you should already know what's about to happen after what I just showed you in the old. I'm showing you different types of so-called exclusive definitions of Gentiles. Only a non like, no, this says Helen. What's Helen mean, man? Let's read to you. Tell it. Right? Matter of fact, what is dispersed? Okay, will he go to the dispersed? Okay, we'll get that, and then we'll get uh, Helen. So Helen is G, 1672, another definition for Gentile. G, 1672, what does it say? What does it say? A Greek, either by nationality, whether a native of the mainland or of the Greek islands or colonies. Okay. And then the second definition, in a wider sense, so this is the definition that should have been the first one, and in a, in a wider sense, the name embraces all nations. Now it goes off and says not Jews, but we're going to prove that in Scripture. All nations, not Jews, that made the language, customs, and learnings of the Greeks their own. The primary reference is to a difference of religion and worship. So they're saying that the primary, the, the more broad understanding of this Hellene, this Gentile, is people that have made the customs and the heritage of the Greeks their own, meaning they weren't bloodline Grecians, but they followed the customs of the Greeks. So we're going to break that down right now in Scripture. Mind you, that's a Gentile that's 1672. That's different than Ethnos 18, I mean 1484. Showing you in the New Testament that's two types of Gentiles. What's going on? So, who are the dispersed, right? Let's go to Ezekiel 36. Thank you, Father. Ezekiel 36 and 19. It says, um, I started 13, I mean 18. Matter of fact, I started 17. Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, this is the northern kingdom, they devoured it. By their own way and by their doings, their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Verse 18, wherefore I poured, out, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for the idols where had they had polluted. So this is the whole house of Israel, house of Israel, Judah and, Judah and Israel. And I scattered them amongst the heathen and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way, according to their doings, I judge them. So this was spoken to who? The house of Israel. All right? So who did this dispersed is Israel. So it says, John chapter 7 and 35, then said to Jews amongst them, where will he go that he should not find him? Will he go into the dispersed? Will he go into the other Israelites that are what? Among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles. So Israel was scattered all over. Right? This is in the law. This is one of the curses that we broke in Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. He says he's going to scatter us amongst all nations. This is why in Matthew 28 and 19, it tells you, um, go among all nations, right? Let's read that before we go prove those Gentiles, those Hellen are Israelites. We're going to go to that right now. This is Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end, even unto the end of the world. So understand, it doesn't matter how that is written, okay? And it is written in the truth, but with learned and understanding, you know that this is never talking about another nation, because what you learned and established from the beginning of the book so why, why, Christians say, well, why is he saying go to all nations? Is that what it say? Teach all nations. Let's show you why he said teach all nations, man. Let's show you, right? Go on Apocrypha. And these things that I read is going to help you understand why they took Apocrypha out. It's Tobit chapter 3, verse 
13, verse 3, and confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel. All right? We're supposed to confess him among the Gentiles. For he has scattered, the higher have scattered us among them. That's why. You got to confess him among the Gentiles. Why? Because his life is scattered amongst them. So we got to go into the lands of all nations and teach this truth because Israel's there. That's why. Easy, easy to answer that. Now, the Gentiles out of Helene, 1672, let's show you that according to their definition, you know, uh, Helene is someone that take on Greek customs and culture and heritage and excluding, in so many words, uh, religious worship. No, that's exactly what it is. They really try to hide the key parts. All right, so let's just show you that Jews, Israelites, were made to do this. And so, therefore, those Gentiles that are says Greek in my margin, they are Hellenized Jews. They're not Israelites. So he's going to other Israelites that are dispersed amongst Jews that live in the other greater uh, former Grecian uh, provinces and present Roman day provinces that speak Greek, all right? And you're gonna see why they speak Greek right now. Okay, so yes, that Gentile, which is a different number, we gotta explain what type of Gentile that is, right? So this is 1 Maccabees chapter 1. Let's see. Chapter 1 and verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote, this is 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. He wanted everybody in his whole realm to be one people, meaning all have the same culture and custom. All right? You can't turn into another person. You can't turn your blood into another nationality. He said he wants them to be one people. Right? Verse 42, when everyone should leave his laws, so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. All right. So this also shuts down that false doctrine that on that the um oh you know what? We're gonna keep going, keep going, Salaki. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, all, yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So they're going against our holy law. Right? For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. Because they were strange to us. We know, you know, we keep Sabbath, we keep Passover, man. We we we, you know, we circumcision. This is the stuff that we do. This stuff is strange, y'all telling us to do, right? Um, verse 45, and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. Verse 46, and pollute the sanctuary and holy people, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols, because it was said, do not plant a grab close near unto the um to the altar. Right? That was just breaking the law, right? And chapels of idols, idolatry, building things with man's hands, and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. Because the pig is abominable. We're not even supposed to touch it, right? And they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanliness and profanation to the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. So this is telling you very clearly that they were forced, our forefathers were forced to take on Greek customs. This period documented secular history as the Hellenistic period, where they made people follow Greek customs, like he said, moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So they wanted to consolidate the character and the customs of all the promises that they conquered just in the Grecian captivity to for them to all be Greeks. Right? They wanted everybody to be Greek. Everyone to worship, you know, Bacchus, right? And worship Jupiter and Dionysus, right? This is what they wanted everybody to do. Let's get a little more. Okay, just to show you for show. This is 2 Maccabees. <laughs> Second Maccabees chapter 6. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens, Athens is in Greece, to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of the Most High. Because during the Maccabee period, you had the brothers that were raised up, rebel, fight, and the Most High would give them the dominion, give them the temple back, clean up the temple. This is when you get the feast of dedication, right? Because they rededicated the temple under the Most High after they cleaned it, you know, built up a new altar, because they sacrificed swine's flesh on the altar. That junk is done. Right, they had to regain the temple, but then one of the Maccabees to get killed through guile, through deceit, and then Greece to come back in. So then 
they have to reinforce their um, communist rule over them. They say, hey, you finna be like us and do this. All right? Verse 2. 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 2. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem, and to call it the temple, temple of Jupiter Olympus, and that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwell in the place. So they made us, and I would be able to look up that word stranger for y'all, but that search don't pull up um, apocryphal books. But um, it says that um, Jupiter, the defender of strangers. So they had us worshiping one who, according to Greeks, we were strangers to them and that we should therefore worship Jupiter because he's the defender of strangers, right? Jupiter, another name for Zeus, all right? So they wanted to make us worship that um, sub-deity unto, unto Zeus in Greek mythology, right? The coming, verse 3, the coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people, for the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles, who dallied with harlots, and had, and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places, and besought that, and besides that, brought things that were not lawful, like swine's flesh. Brought things that were not lawful. Verse 5, the altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbid, Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So they start calling themselves Greeks. All right. This is why it says in Galatians 3 and 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek. They're both Israelites. They're both Jews. They're just one is calling himself Greek because he was Hellenized during his captivity. I think that lasted, I think, like 130 years. And they were exiled all over. The Grecian provinces. All gang of Levites was taken down into Egypt, down to Ptolemy. Gang of Levites was taken down there, man. So we had brethren all over. And this is why in Acts, it says there were Jews dwelling in Jerusalem out of every nation under heaven. Right? Devout men. Okay? People that were kicked out of the land or taken away captive, but still was like fearing the most line, trying to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And the faith in Yeshua. They were coming back to Israel to keep the holy feast of Pentecost, which is the holy feast of the weeks, first fruits. All right. So this is the breakdown that the dispersed that Yeshua was going to go teach among the Gentiles were Jews. So he's going to teach his brethren that are among other brethren that are scattered there. So is he going to leave Judea where we can't find him and go teach the scattered Israelites of the northern kingdom that are among the Hellenized Jews? There's still both Jews he was going to go teach. Scattered, he's, well, he's going to disperse among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles, right? Now, let's go to um, Romans, right? Chapter 1. Get into Paul now. Mind you, Paul was hit by the light, by the shy. Paul has the Holy Spirit, so Paul's not going to teach contrary to the Most High. All right? So let's break down, okay? This is Romans. Let's get Romans, man. Let's break down this to the youth first. Romans 1 and 16, for I am not, Romans 1 and 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Mashiach, for it is, for it is the power of Ahia unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You see that? That Greek is a Jew, he's just Hellenized. Okay, so those that are still of the circumcision, living in Judea, Still trying their best to keep the law under the oppression. They get the salvation first. That's what Yeshai preached to them first. <laughs> and then the salvation was opened up into the scattered Israelites who are being referenced in the New Testament as Gentiles, y'all. Right? Now, let's, uh, let's, let's strong that, man. I wasn't going to strong, but let's strong that, man. All right, Romans. We're strong that just to show, you know, who that is, right? Uh, Romans 1, all right. And as that's coming up, we'll go over to Romans 2 and 10. What does it say? It says, But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. And Margin says Greek as well. Um... But there is no respecter of persons with a higher, right? The people must say it is most high, no respecter of persons. He don't respect if you're Israel. He don't, he don't care if you're Israel, right? 
Let's go to the law. This is how you know that's not talking about us because we read in the law. What does it say in the law? Man? All right. What does it say in the law? Exodus chapter 2 and 25. And I looked upon the children of Israel and I had respect unto them. So he respect us as a nation. All right. And understand, that respect of person whole breakdown, that has to do with judgment, all right? In our law, it says you should not respect persons in judgment, meaning you can't judge a person if they sin differently just because he's rich and judge them differently than the man you judge the poor. You got to judge the rich person and the poor the same way. That's the breakdown of respect of person. That had nothing to do with nationality. <laughs> nothing to do with nationality at all, y'all. All right, understand that. So this is Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. And we're going right into it. All right. So as we scroll down, this is the Strong's. We already got it opened up. All right. Already got it opened up. All right. It says, For I am more into not what's this hold on let's get it say i am i am not ashamed of the gospel to christ for it is the power of a higher unto salvation to everyone that believe it now we already read who salvation is for so these only two can only be israelites to the jew yeah that's from the tribe of judah or benjamin and levi to jew first and also the greek what does it say for greek same thing is said in St. John 7 and 35, 1672, Helen. So as you know, I just read all that in Maccabees. That should be your proof to show you that uh, we're breaking this scripture down right. We're breaking it down right because it said that the Gentile was 1672, which was a Greek. And now it says to the Jew first, to the Greek, which is also 1672, right? Helene, these are... Hellenized Jews, right? Now, same one, Romans chapter 2 and 10, we just read, right? Romans chapter 2 and 10, we just read. For glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and the Gentiles, 1672. This is a Hellenized Jew, y'all. All right? Hellenized Jew. One more. Um, Romans uh, 3 and 9. It says, What then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise. For we, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Right? So this is talking about Israel and the Gentiles, y'all. Right? I've already showed you in the New Testament, there's two types of Gentiles. And we're just getting into this New Testament meat right now, right? Let's go to Zechariah, Old Testament. Okay. When we go over there, we get foundation. 12 and 6. Zechariah 12 and 6. All right. Yeah, it's a long one, y'all, but I, I had to get all this out, man. So Israel can know how we're supposed to be dealing with the Most High. And um, so we can be holy. Holy means to be set apart, severed, man, from all nations by way of our holy law. All right, this is Zechariah chapter 12, verse 6. And in, and in that day will I make the governors of Judah like a harp of tire amongst the wood and like a torch of fire in a sheet, and they shall devour, devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place even in Jerusalem. So when we're scattered, this is a prophecy the most I say he's gonna bring us back. But he's gonna bring Judah first. You understand? This is why we're this is why we're reading this because it says to the Jew first, this is why. Verse seven, Ahia, verse seven. This is Zechariah twelve and seven. Ahia also shall say the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So this is why this salvation to the Jew first. This is why it had to be broken down into two sections. Y'all must say, why didn't you just save them all at one time? Because he just told you right here, he wanted the glory of the house of David, man, to 
to, to, to be exalted, man. Because David was a man after his own heart. And made promise to David that it should be none of the tribe of Judah that should not sit on the throne in Israel. Right? So this is why he said to the Jew first. Now, let's go back into the new 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. All y'all been the truth, endure. Y'all know where I'm going with this, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, yeah, that brethren precepts to Israel, man. Um, but it was 1917. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt any wise rebuke thy neighbor and suffer not sin upon him. So that precept, so brethren, that's always talking about Israel in the Bible. All right. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. That's inconclusive there. You know, I mean, that's not definitive there. How can you was be a, a Gentile? Okay, and, and you gotta, you guys gotta deal with this scripture, all right? Either you're a non-Israelite or you're an Israelite. How you was a non-Israelite? I mean, it's like at first you wasn't, and then you were a non-Israelite. See how did that? Is there confusion there? No, because we're gonna show you the edification on how they were a non-Israelite. Matter of fact, when you look that up, that's gonna be another definition for Gentile. All right? It's going to be another definition. Corinthians 12. And it's going to be another definition because it's not Helen. That's not Helen. Oh, now we got a little half issues. So we got to get this Corinthians up. Let's see. Let's get this Corinthians up. See if this is gonna let me load this boy up. I think I had this issue when I was looking up yesterday. Let's see. All right, now this thing is tripping me out. Why in here? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, mm, no, it's giving me a little headache. We might not look this up, y'all. It's giving me a headache. Okay, so it says, you know, you were Gentiles. How were they Gentiles? Carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. So they, Paul was calling them Gentiles because of their actions, right? Because Israel, let's, let's, let's show you something. Psalms 96 and 5, right? Psalm 96 and 5 says, for the powers of all, for all the powers of the nations are idols. So all the nations, which that word nation precepts to strangers, is of idols, right? But the most high made the heavens. So if you're of Israel, you're going to worship the most high. If you're not of Israel, you're going to serve idols. So it says you were Gentile because you stopped serving the most high and you stopped worshiping and you started worshiping idols, right? Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the spirit of Ayah, call it Yeshai, a curse, and that no man can say Yeshai is master, but by the Holy Ghost. So, this is giving you understanding. They're being brought back now through the faith of Yeshai, and they're not, they're not Gentiles anymore, but it says you were a Gentile. But now that through the faith of Yeshai, you came back to the hope of your salvation, you're keeping the law, now you're not a Gentile. But this is why Paul said you were. But the whole point is, is this is giving you understanding that you can be a Gentile by your actions. I'm not twisting that. It says you were a Gentile by what? Carried away into these dumb idols because you were worshiping idolatry. And the Gentiles worship idols like I just read to you in Psalms 9, 6, and 5, right? I'll praise your name, I have you shy. So, verse 13 says, For, um, for, by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether there be bond or free, and have been made to, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So this is the same understanding. It says Greece in the, in the, in the margin again in 1672. You guys can do these searches and look them up. All right. This is for just for you to know and understand. All right. That these scriptures that are being brought out that are saying that those are Gentiles, no. 
These are talking about Hellenized Jews or scattered Israelites, right? 1672 is scattered, is a Hellenized Jew, right? Now, let's go to Ephesians 2 and 11. We talk a lot about this in the gospel too, right? Ephesians 2 and 11. All right, what do we say? Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh. Wow. This is being said again, yes. In your flesh, meaning the actions of your carnal body, you're being a Gentile. How? Because you're worshiping idols. That's what a Gentile serves. A Gentile don't serve a idol. So he's saying, wherefore, remember, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So, those that were of the circumcision, which were the Jews that were in Judea, they were never kicked out of the land. They were calling these scattered Israelites who were Gentiles in the flesh by their actions, worshiping idols. Okay, worshiping the two golden calves in the northern kingdom set up by Jeroboam. Okay, and that they were being called uncircumcised, meaning they're called unlawful. They're calling not the most high's people. They're being called Gentiles. If you're uncircumcised, that is the way of the Gentiles. So this is what they were being called. You understand? Verse 12, that at that at that time ye were without Isha, you were out the hope of salvation to repent and come back to the most high. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. What's an alien? Man, that's a foreigner to the commonwealth. Okay, that is the home front. That is the 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 civil civil rights. To being in the land. Okay, you're alien. Because what? You was exiled out of the land and scattered amongst the nations. You were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. So you weren't a part of the covenant because the most high kicked you out of the land. And a part of and a part of the covenant is that you there's a law for repentance. But they served idols. So he said, You're not even my people. We're gonna read this right after to show you what this is talking about. Strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope. You didn't have your shy to repent so you can come back. You couldn't even sacrifice on the altar. You couldn't do nothing because the Most High cast you off, right? With no hope and without a higher in the world. But now in Yeshai Hamashiach, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Yeshai. What does the blood do? The blood makes the atonement for sins. What is sin? Transgression of the law who was lawgiving to Israel. Gonna keep going back to Israel. Now, all this that was just said, being aliens from the commonwealth, being called circumcision, being Gentiles in the flesh, we're gonna show you who this is talking about, man. All right? First, let's go to Ezekiel. First, let's go to Ezekiel 37. All right? I hope I'm not going here too early. Ezekiel 37. All right? And 19. Mm, now, okay, yeah, so let's go to Hosea first. Let's go to Hosea for y'all, though, that's not familiar. There was a split within the two kingdoms, within the, within the nation of Israel, into two kingdoms, all right? The northern kingdom of Israel, which consists of the ten tribes, Ephraim being the capital, Ephraim being the chief. This is why Isaac laid his hand wittingly on Ephraim being the younger than his older brother Manasseh, because Ephraim would lead the northern kingdom. And the southern kingdom, Judah, consisting of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, right? There was a separation of the 12 tribes, and there were two nations, two kingdoms, right? This is Hosea, all right? Hosea, man. Okay, let's we'll start at uh, verse 1. The word of Ahiah that came unto Hosea, the son of Zeri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. So I'll show you this. This is during the days Hosea is prophesying that Judah is the king. Um, Hosea is the, um, Hezekiah is the king of Judah. And um, Joash is the son of Israel, right? Okay. Beginning of the word of Ahiah by Hosea. And Ahiah said to Hosea, go take unto, unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from Ahiah. So he's given a metaphor of telling um, Hosea to take a wife of whoredoms. Mind you, it tells you 
that um, Ahiah was a husband unto Israel. Okay, so a whoredom, a whore is going to, she's going to be dealing with a whole bunch of men. So spiritually, the other nations and the idolatry is what the whoredoms that the land was doing. And the, what people in the land is talking about? The land of the northern kingdom of Israel. They were being a whore, leaving the marriage unto the most high, because he was a husband unto us, and dealing with the other nations and being a whore with them by following their customs, their doctrines, their idols, right? Now, we drop down to these children, all right? It says, um, matter of fact, okay, verse 3, so, so he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and conceived and bare him a son, right? Verse 4, and I said unto him, call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehuja, who was one of the kings of Israel that did a whole lot of wickedness, man. Okay, sacrifice and fasting, making his kids to pass through the fire, leading Israel to sin and worship Baal and Ashtoreth, right? And will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. So the kingdom, which is the northern kingdom, he says he's going to cause it to cease. It ain't going to be no more, right? How? Is he going to let them all get killed? No, you're going to see what he does. And it shall come to pass, at that day I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Verse 6, and she conceived again and bare a daughter, and I said unto him, Call her name Lo Rahama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. So he said, You're going to take them out of the land. That's how Israel is going to cease to be in the land of Israel, the northern kingdom. I'm going to take them out of the land. Verse 7, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. Judah was still there, right? This is why Yeshua came to Judea, right? He said, Don't go into the land of Samarians, because this was land where the scattered Israelites were not offered the opportunity to be grafted back in yet. And we're going to get into that too. But I have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by a higher their power and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, nor just nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned Lo Rahama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said I call his name Lo Ami. For so every child that's born comes with a prophecy. Their name means something. So this baby's name means, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your power. So the northern kingdom of Israel, who are bloodline descendants of Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, of the 10 tribes, these are 10 tribes of the 12 tribes of Israel that he said he's going to take them out of the land, and I'm, you are not my people, and I will not be your power. Right? So what are they? If they're not the Most High's people, they're Gentiles. And if they're not his power, which means he, they don't serve him, they're Gentiles. Very clear. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Right? So even though he cast him off, he's still giving a word of salvation and prophecy to them. This is what it says. And it shall come to pass, it's going to happen, that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. Same place where it said, man, you're not my people. I'm not your power. Get out of here. This is what Hosea prophesied to them. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. So these people that are cast off, they're prophesied to be brought back. You see that? Verse 11. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. Right? They're going to be brought back together and be one nation and appoint themselves one head with one king and they shall come up out of the land for great shall be the day of Jezreel. So ain't going to be no more king, two kings, no more two kingdoms. It's going to be one king over us. When is this going to happen? When our king Yeshua gets back. You understand? So mind you, from, from this point forward, you don't hear about none about these Israelites from the northern team tribes coming back into Israel. Therefore, they're still scattered. They're dispersed amongst the heathen. So this is who Paul is going to get. This is who he's teaching his truth to. First, he talked to the scattered Jews. He's talked to the Jews of the circumcision that were never kicked out of the land, but were living in other lands, uh, either by choice or by the Grecian and Roman captivities. And then um, it says, um, he went to those first, and then he went to the scattered Israelites of these 10 that I'm reading you right now that were prophesied to be brought back into the salvation, into the hope of salvation, namely into the land, y'all. This is what it was just went over in Ephesians. 
They were aliens to the Commonwealth of Israel. They were foreigners. Okay, they were called uncircumcised. Okay, by those of the Jews that were still um, taking heed to the law. If you read in First Kings, man, it tells you, man, that uh, when the Second Kings, it tells you that uh, they were worshiping idolatry, full fledged, one hundred percent. Right? They were work. So like they were worshiping, you know, the other the other deities. They weren't worshiping the highest. So I said, man, you out of here. Get out of here, man. But I'm going to bring you back, right? So now let's go to Ezekiel 37 to show you that this is the whole thing that's going on with Paul ministering to these people. Okay, Ezekiel 37 and um, we'll start at 19. We'll start at 18. And, the ch and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou means by these, because they're asking about the two sticks that was in the verses preceding. Verse 19, say unto them, Thus saith the higher power, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim. Because Joseph had the two kids, Manasseh and Ephraim, Ephraim being um, blessed to be above Manasseh, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and put him and put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. This is the fulfillment of what was being told Hosea. That they're going to bring Judah and Israel back together and have one king. Right? And the sticks of wherein thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the higher power, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, for they were scattered, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. So the northern tribes that were living by Gentile in the flesh, and were Gentiles by being carried away to their dumb idols, they're going to get brought back and put back in their land. Verse 22, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. You understand, y'all? So there's Israelites when Yeshua came that were in the land, and there were Israelites that were outside of the land that were called Gentiles by their actions in the flesh. All right. This is a confusion, man, with people reading Paul's letters because they don't read the law. They're not learned in the law or the prophets. They don't know what's going on, what's being said. All right. So we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. So we can touch on some of these prophecies that everyone loves to quote. All right. This is Isaiah chapter 11. And verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. This is a precept of what we just read. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. And Ephraim shall not envy Judah because Ephraim used to envy Judah. Like, man, why y'all still get to be in the land? Y'all did wrong too. But the most I had mercy on Judah because of the faithfulness of David. And Judah should not vex Ephraim. Meaning, I'm going to call y'all the uncircumcised. Y'all unclean. Y'all get away from us, man. Y'all for sure. Y'all serving Baal and Asherah, man. Ain't going to be no more beef between the northern ten and the southern kingdom of Judea no more. Right? He said, I'm going to make that all cool, man. They're going to be one stick of one king over us. Right? Let's go to Baruch. And the prophet, let's go to Baruch. Chapter 3 and verse 36. Right? Read a little bit more. Okay, we're going to serve the Most High with all our heart, mind, strength, and truth. Luke chapter 3, verse 36. This is our, I started at verse 35. This is our power, and there shall none other be accounted of a comparison of him. Eyes above all powers, all the lesser powers, which is lesser created powers that disobeyed him, and he's above them all. Verse 36. He has found out all the way of knowledge and has given it unto Jacob his servant and to Israel his beloved. Why are we going there? All right? Because there are precepts all through the scripture as we read when it said that. Yeshua said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. When we went to Isaiah 56 and said Israel had been a lost sheep. Well, there's many precepts that refer to Israel, so you can know who the letters that Paul wrote were written unto. Right? As we read right here, we read it again. Baruch 3.36, he has found out all the way of knowledge and has given it unto Jacob his servant. So Jacob is his servant and to Israel his beloved. So 
we need to go through the script and see if any of Paul's letters, mind you, the epistle means letter in, in, in the Greek, right? It means letter. So every letter has a heading and a title who was written to, right? And so we look at the, the, the letters who they're written to, you're going to realize they're written to a whole lot of these terms I'm going to bring out to you right now. Okay, so we got Israel, it says what? His beloved. Let's go to, um, let's go to Isaiah, all right? Isaiah, Isaiah. Isaiah 48 and 12. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called. So if you're called, to my Israel. You're beloved, you're Israel. You're called, you're Israel. You know, what else we got? What else, what else, what else, what else? We got, um, uh, Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. So if you're the beloved, if you're the called, if you're the elect, if you're the servant, you're Israel. Okay, these are terms you're going to see all in Paul's letters. Just letting you know, you're going to see all these terms, right? It says you're right here, Isaiah 45, 17. But Israel shall be saved in the high with an everlasting salvation. This is a salvation that's for forever for us. It doesn't say everyone else. It says for Israel. Why is it to be particular and say everyone else could have salvation? Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. Wow. Could that be the world that Yeshua is talking about in St. John 3 16? It definitely is, because Israel is a world without end. We've been scattered all over the earth, we multiply. We're not the minority, we're the majority. All right. Um, any more else of these precepts? Uh, let's see. This is where we get the title, all right, of the channel, right? This is Isaiah 44. And to thus saith the higher that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee, fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jeshurun, whom I have chosen, right? So chosen is also, all right, another metaphor for Israel. So let's go through his letters right quick. Let's go through his letters right quick. And um, we'll see who's Paul's writing to, all right? Let's see if there's anything... That we missed, right? Called, beloved, elect, chosen. Um, oh, we got to get one more. Let's get the saints, right? Let's get the saints. What is a saint according to the Bible, right? Someone that is, you know, not learned in the Old Testament. Say, oh, anybody who believes. You know, that sounds good, right? Sounds good. Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So you're only a saint if you have made a covenant with the Most High by sacrifice. Let me read it again. Psalms 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, when was this done? Exodus 24 and 4. When I'm going to go to it. Exodus 24 and 4 will tell you when Moses sprinkled the blood of the covenant on the people and made a sacrifice with them. They will keep the laws, keep the words that the Most High gave unto them to follow. Right? These are the saints. Um, another precept. Um, Psalms one forty-eight. Right? Psalms one forty-eight. It's in verse thirteen. Let them praise the name of Ahia, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. Verse fourteen. He also exalted the horn of his people. The praise of his, all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye Ahia. So a saint is an Israelite, right? There's even another precept in Deuteronomy 33. You get that one too. So you know for sure, you know, in the law, you know, there's saints in the law, right? Deuteronomy 33 and Three. I'll read it too. And he said, I came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousand of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Right? Verse three. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive thy words. Moses commanded us a law, even 
the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. So all the saints said at the feet of Moses and received the words of the Most High, the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Right? So quickly, let's go and see if any of these letters that Paul's writing, writing any of these precepts, because mind you, Paul knows the law, he knows the prophets. So he doesn't have to say, I'm writing to the Israelites in Rome. I'm writing to the Israelites in Corinth. I'm writing to the Israelites in Galatia. When he's um Thessalonia, Colossia, Galatia, right? So let's see. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved. Wow. Beloved is Israel, right? Beloved of Ahia, called to be saints. Wow. So you got beloved, called, and saints. Man, we know who we writing to according to precept. Right? And according to understanding that salvation is only for Israel, these Romans can't be. They can't be Gentiles. Because salvation is only for Israel. Because the Most High feels like he, he does not like the heathen. They're nothing to him. They be like under Spiro. Remember? Remember? This is why you got to study the whole volume of the book to know the truth. It says that those that be loved and read that Baruch of Ahia called, read that in Isaiah, and saints, we read that just now. That's what he writes. So let's go. Go to the next book. So it doesn't matter what's said in the book of Romans, you know who it's written to. If I write a letter to my mother and my father opens it up, just because she opened it up and read it, does it mean it's to her now? Because she opened it up and read it? No. No, I didn't write to her. So it doesn't matter who reads the text. It's written to a certain people. And the doctrine must be taught as it is written, man. All right? So knowing that he wrote to a certain people, you have to give all respect to what he's saying to those people. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, right? Verse 2, unto the church of Ahia, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Hamashiach Eshai, called to be saints. That's Israel. Let's go to the next one. Let's see if something's different in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of the Shai and Mashiach, by the will of Ahia, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of Ahia, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Acacia. That's Israel. Let's keep going. So we want it all the way clear. Yeah, I'm going to go through every letter. Y'all see. All right. Let's see. This is Galatians, all right? Um, Galatians, verse 5. To whom be glory for it, all right? To whom be glory. All right, I started one. Galatians 1 and 1. Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but Yeshua, Mashiach, and Ahia, the father who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren, you already know who that's talking about, which are with me, unto the churches of Galatia, Grace, grace be to you and peace from Ahiah the Father and from our master Yeshai Mashiach who gave himself for our sins. Israel's the only one that can sin. Israel's the only one given the law. And he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of Ahiah and according to the will of Yeshai and our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you. <laughs> Into the grace of Yeshai unto unto another gospel. So we these, these are the call that are there. <laughs> and Yeshai came for who? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. So I know that's Israel. Ephesians. Paul, an apostle, chapter one, verse one. Paul, an apostle of Yeshai and Mashiach by the will of Ahia to the saints. Philippians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Timothy, the servant of Yeshai and Mashiach, to all the saints in Hamashiach, Yeshai, which are at Philipp Philippi with the bishops and the deacons. Colossians 1 and 1. Paul, an apostle of Yeshai, Hamashiach, by the will of Ahiah, and Timothy is our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Yeshai and Hamashiach, which are at Colossia. Grace be unto you and peace from Ahia, our Father, and to you, and, uh, and the Master, Yeshai, Mashiach. Thessalonians. That's the first Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians. Who's the church? 
Okay, y'all gotta know who the church is. Let's let's see who the church is right quick. All right. This is um Acts chapter seven and verse thirty six. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. He's talking about the wilderness. Our forefathers come out of Egypt. Verse thirty seven. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, Prophet shall Ahia your father raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me shall ye hear him. This is a prophecy of Yeshai coming to the earth way back in Exodus, all right? Verse 38, this is he, Moses, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So the church was already established and in existence way over in the times of the wilderness of Moses. All right, all you have to say, the church of Ahia just started. No, it didn't. The church we just read is in the wilderness. Who the church? It was Israel. Let's read it again. Um, uh, Acts chapter 7, verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Who was in the wilderness? Children of Israel, with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai, which and with our fathers he received the lively oracles to give to us. That's what I'm say. Well, the next multitude was there too. So see, that's how the Gentiles. All right, even though you, we already see the Most High hates nothing like the other nations. Let's go address the mixed multitude right now. Right, we're going to address every single thing, man. So you can be all the way convinced in your own mind. Right, this is Numbers chapter. 11, and um, we just started one. And when the people complained, it displeased the higher, and the higher heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the higher burnt among them and consumed them that were in the othermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto a higher, the fire was quenched. Verse 3 And he called the name of the place Taberah, because the fire of a higher burnt, burnt among them. Verse 4 And the mixed multitude. That was among them, the ones that went up with them out of Egypt, fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat, right? So we're going to jump down over to verse 31. And there went forth, they went from Ahia and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp as it were a day's journey on this side and as it was a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Because they wanted to eat. They wanted meat. They were tired of eating quail. I'm tired of eating manna. Who wants meat? So he gave them quail, fish, you know, among birds to the full, right? And the people stood up all that day and all that night and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten almost. And they spread them all abroad for themselves around about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, Yet it was chewed, the wrath of Ahia was kindled against the people, and Ahia smote the people with a very great plague. Right? Verse 34, and he called the name of the place Kirbath Hatabah, because there they buried the people that lusted. So who lusted again? Let's go back to verse 4. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. So all the mixed multitude that fell a lusting got buried there. Right? I'm not twisting nothing. Right? So, the mixed one, two mother left out of Egypt with Israel, but they didn't get the law, and they didn't go into the land and get the land of, inher of inherited possession. Right? So, kill all of that. Right? Going back. Going back. Um, going back. Right? The Thessalonians. He was at, about to go on the Thessalonians. Right? So there's the church. Unto the church of Thessalonians, which is which is in Ahia the Father and in the Master Yeshua Mashiach. Grace be unto you and peace from Ahia our Father and our Master Yeshua Mashiach. We give thanks to Ahia always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Master Yeshua Mashiach in the sight of Ahia our Father. Knowing, brethren, Beloved, your election of a higher. Yeah, the beloved. That's Israel. Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, chapter one, verse one. 
Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians and Ahia our father and the master Yeshai Mashiach and the master Yeshai Mashiach grace unto you and peace from Ahia our father and the master Yeshai Mashiach we are bound to thank Ahia always for you brethren as it is met because that your faith grows exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all towards each other abounded so there's the brethren that's also Israel <laughs> Timothy, it says that his, his Timothy is his son because he's a, a, a little, you know, disciple to, of, of Paul. Same thing, Second Timothy. Titus also is a son unto, um, matter of fact, let's read. Paul is servant, Tim, um, Titus chapter 1, verse 1. Paul is servant of a high and apostle of Yeshua Mashiach according to the faith of a highest elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, right? So this is to the elect. <laughs> But it's also, he says, right, just says, Titus, my son, but he's talking to them about the elect, right? So this is, um, Titus also being an uh, Israelite himself. Now, um, what is this one? Philemon, Paul to Philemon, right? This one's a Philemon. Can we just jump down to verse 4? Um, Philemon chapter 1, verse 4. I thank my power of making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward Ahia, toward the master Yeshai, and toward all saints. So this letter is to Philemon. Um, this whole book of Hebrews is to Hebrew Israelites, right? So we don't even got to read that one. Right? James 101. Oh, this is a super mega clear one. James, a servant of Ahia and of the Master of Shia and to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, my brethren. Count it all joy when ye fall into the diver temptations, right? So as you see, man, so like y'all, all y'all seeing all these letters of Paul and in, in, in the New Testament, man, they're all ready to Israelites, y'all. You got to know this, man. This is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Yeshua and Mashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Beth Bethnia, right? So we know who was scattered. We just read it. Verse 2, elect. According to the foreknowledge of Ahiah the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of the Shai Mashiach, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. You know, the elect is it's Israel. So y'all y'all see the picture, y'all see what's good, right? I touch on a few things, man, for this this lesson, and man. We 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 going strong, but uh, you know, I know that uh attention spans, you know, might be getting burnt out here, right? Let's get Let's get um let's get Nehemiah, right? Because let's get Esther. Because some say, you know, well in the book of Esther, you know, it said um some were joined unto the house of Israel, right? And we can join unto them, right? Let's it's Esther chapter eight, verse seventeen. And in every province, this is after the most high turn the days of sorrow into gladness for us. Let us avenge the the um, plan, failed plan of Haman convincing the, the um, Persian king at Xerxes to let all the Persians kill the Jews in the realm. But the Most High Flint didn't let us go to work on them for two days, right? And so the people of the land saw that the Most High is with us. So this is Esther chapter 8, verse 17. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and the decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. This is talking about the Feast of Purim. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon him. So, what were they doing? What were they doing? Were they giving like blood transfusion or something? Like, you can't turn into a Jew, right? It's by the seed of your father. It's by the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 patriarchs, right? So, how did they turn into being a Jew? It's because they started following our power and trying to keep and keeping our customs. All right. Does that make them join unto the covenant? Nope. They just want to say, y'all, we see he cool with you. Who, 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 who hasn't jumped on the bad wagon, man? The dumb New East and the New England Patriots, right? Alabama, Crimson Tide, man. Who jumped in? Everyone wants to be with the winner. Everyone wants to be with the one that's, you know, that's, that's, that's making things happen. So like, man, look, we down with y'all, man. We want to serve him. They didn't bring him into the covenant. 
And that, didn't turn, and that doesn't turn him into Jew. A Jew means you come from the tribe of Judah initially, and then after splitting the kingdom, Mosai sent Benjamin down into the land inheritance of Judah, along with the Levites that were in the suburbs of the northern tribes, northern ten tribes, and they lived in Judah, Judea. So a Jew means you're from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, or Levi, right? You cannot turn your blood into a Jew. You can follow the laws that the Jews follow, and this is what it's clearly saying, okay? Because you can't turn into another nation. I can't move to India and start practicing Hinduism, and now I'm turned into a Hindu. Now I'm turned into an East Indian, and I'm still an Israelite. You understand? Everyone has always looked to our power, man, even Ruth, right? Uh, the Moabite, right? She... She wanted to follow our power, right? But guess what? She couldn't perform, you know, the laws that were um, in reference to um, taking up marriage, you know, and, and taking off the shoe because one didn't want to marry her in, in her stead of her dead. Of, um, man, what's that? Man, we're going to have to go with that, y'all. We're going to have to go to it right quick. But she was called, and she's always called a Moabite, right? That's the point. She joined unto Israel, you know, married to Israelite, but in fact, let's go to the um, genealogy of Jeshai, right? Go to the genealogy of Jeshai, and it'll tell you right here, Matthew chapter 1, right? No one gets to join unto us, man, all right? It's not a covenant for everybody, right? What it says? It says right here, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 5, and Simon beget Boaz of uh, Rechab, and Boaz beget Obed of Ruth, right? So they say, oh, look at she's in the lineage. But you fail to understand that the lineage is determined by the patriarch, the patriarch, right? Through the father, right? So it doesn't matter who the woman was, okay? It doesn't matter, right? That's, and, and she's called a Moabite in scripture. Who else? Who else? Let's see. It's, it's another, it's another one in here, right? And Jesse, verse 6, and Jesse beget David the king, and David the king beget Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Right? So Urias the Hittite, he had the Hittite wife. So what? What that means she about to get saved. Nope. Nope. If y'all understand war and the word, which is another lesson, I did it um, um weapons of warfare. I gotta check out that lesson. Weapons of warfare. Israel could take the other heathen woman of captive of the nation they captured and after 30 days could go into her, right? So that don't turn them into Israelites. They spoil us for war. You know, you get to get the, get the girl, man. And when you're done with her, you let her go. That's in the law. That doesn't turn. So the woman, there's no bloodline in the woman, okay? We have the seed, okay? And we determine, you know, the bloodlines all through the men. That's why Satan's genealogy shows men, 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 all through it. It mentioned Rachel just to give you resumes to show that the bloodline, that's in the story of the bloodline. But it never says anywhere in scripture, the Moabite, even the um the lady, um, is it Rakab? Is it um the lady of uh Jericho who let the spies in? She was like, man, I see, you know, how it's with y'all, and, you know, he finna give y'all this land. They spared her life, but she ain't about to get in the kingdom now. She ain't finna be in the kingdom now. You know what I'm saying? I gotta understand this stuff. Let's go. Let's get me to get one. Um, let me get this breakdown, man, out of uh, Nehemiah, right? Matter of fact, we get the, the man see right now. This is Ezra 259. These were they which went up from Tel Melah. Tell Harsa, Cherub, Adad, and Emmer, but they could not show their father's house and their seed whether they were of Israel. So you determine who you are by your father's house and the seed, that means the seed of his copulation, which in the Greek means sperma, that they were of the nation of Israel. That's how you figure out. It didn't matter who the woman is. So the woman is just there, you know, that as far as She's having a child, but there's no bloodline DNA from the fathers that's coming from the woman to determine that she's that she, the offspring is of Israel. It's always through the seed of the man. That's why it always tells you someone, Joshua, the son of Nay, is giving you his credential that he's an Israelite. 
You understand? Let's get this scripture in Nehemiah. Because some think all oh, day, they become Jews, they can join into us. It's cool, okay? We're going to check out a little, a little script in Nehemiah, man. All right? Check this out. And hopefully it's in Nehemiah. Let me see what it says. Um, um, Ezra. No, that's an Ezra. Ezra. It's an Ezra. All right, check this out, y'all. This is Ezra, chapter 4. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity building the temple unto a higher power of Israel. So we came out of Babylon captivity under the decree of Cyrus, Judah and Benjamin, and we start, and Levi start building up the temple. This is what our adversaries, the strangers, the Gentiles, said to us. Verse 2. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your power, your power as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esar Hadad, king of Ashur, which brought us up hither. Right? Now, if salvation is really open for other nations, they can join unto us, right? If um, in that Babylonian captivity of Esther, where the men, people became Jews, which is before this, if that's really what happened, they, they joined into us, then Zerubbabel should be like, okay, it's cool. Let's see what Zerubbabel say. Um, Ezra chapter 4 verse 3 but Zerubbabel and Joshua and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel so these are the elders the ones that know what's good with the law and who we are said unto him you have nothing to do with us what you have nothing to do to us to build a house unto our power but we ourselves together will build unto a higher power of Israel as King Cyrus the king of Persia has commanded us. You see that there? So it's not universal, man. It's not. He said, man, he's our power. He not y'all power. He not rocking with y'all. Okay? So you, you might desire to serve, but you know it don't go like that, man. Mind you, Solomon built the temple safe unto sacrifice. Not that the Most High dwelleth in it. Because he dwelleth in the temple made he don't dwell in the temple made with hands, right? So he made the temple that we can sacrifice unto him. So it's like, you guys are not going to partake in us building a place of sacrifice unto our power. You have to understand what that is, man. No, y'all ain't got no part, right? Let's get Amos, right? Amos. A couple more precepts, y'all. We're just going to shut it down. Amos 9. What? Amos. Right there. Amos. Amos. All right. Amos 9 and 11. Right? In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David. So, the same way the tabernacle was getting built up then. I is prophesying you're going to build up the tabernacle of David, but this is not a physical tabernacle. This is a spiritual one. This is the revelation of who you Israelites are today. And the scattered have been proverb by word and don't know who they are because the enemies of the Most High have conspired all together to keep us from knowing who we are. Same ones that y'all trying to bring into this uh, covenant and let them be fellow heirs with us. That's not according to Scripture. He said he's going to build up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Verse 12. And they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name saith I that do this. And understand this y'all. When you look in the Septuagint it does not say called by my name. It says called by name. Alright. So they're not called by the um, it's not, it says called, called by name. It doesn't say called by my name because only Israel is called by his name, all right? And all through scripture, where you see that, it doesn't say called by my name, man. Look in the, in the, in the Septuagint, man. Look it up, okay? Because there's only one people that's called by the Most High's name, that's Israel. 
And so people, so you know, I know you look in there and say, oh, look at that, look at that. You look in the original text, that's why you study to show yourself approved. It's not going to say that, right? So after we are brought back up and built up as a holy people, as a temple of worship unto the Most High, as a people, our sacrifice being in our praise being in our body, in our members, he said after that, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, all the nations, all the child nations are going to be a possession unto us. Just like we read in the law, Leviticus 25, we're going to own them. Okay? And we're going to own them forever. They're going to be our slaves. This is what the scriptures say. Right? Let's go to, um, let's go to another piece here. Go to Joel, right? Joel, right? Hmm. It says, um, Joel chapter 3 and 4. Yea, what have ye to do with you, O Tyree and Zidon? This is, <coughs> this is the same thing you're shy. Same reason why you're shy. Ignore it. What you got to do with me? Hmm? Like, what are you doing? They're the same people. This is the same woman from the same, woman from the same area. Yea, what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me a swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your head? I want to give reparations. Oh, you know what? We're sorry. They gave y'all Juneteenth. You know, they're trying to pass these little laws and square. They're helping Israel right now. Square. They, you know, they're being compassionate right now. Most are like, no, nah, we don't need that. We don't want that. Okay. And if you, Jake, you know what I'm saying, you shouldn't be really worried about it. You know, if they put some hands in your money, they put some money in your hands, put some reverence in your hands, cool. Use that to get up out of the Babylon. <laughs> Use that to preserve yourself from what's about to still about to come on this earth. But the most I said, uh, we don't need no recompense, man. Yeah, take that junk right back, man. All right? You did some dirt. Verse 6, because ye have taken my silver and my gold and carried into your temples my goodly and present things, the manure. Okay, look on the arch of uh, um, <clears throat> Titus in Rome. And parading as a um, tourist spectacle for people to come look at. Look at that. Look at that. <clears throat> we took town Jerusalem, man. 70 AD, man. We took all this about the temple, all the gold, all the shields, everything. We took it all, right? Verse 6 The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold them to the priesthood that you may move them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them up out of the places where the ye have sold them. We turn your recompense upon your head. That means everything that they did to us is going to happen back to them. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the land, into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for Ahia has spoken it. Right? You understand? There's a judgment that's on every nation of Israel. Maybe that's another lesson I might have to do. But the Most High said that. He will take all the curses up off of us and put them on our enemies, man. I don't know how they're going to get salvation with us and be under the curses that were under us. I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't know how, how, how does that work out, right? So all I want to break down and show y'all, man, is that, um, you know, we're Israel. You know, we got to keep the commandments. We got to keep the faith in the shine. You know, we got to gather ourselves together, all right? We got to gather ourselves together, man, you know, and get ourselves right. Okay, let's get um let's get um this is uh this is Proverbs chapter eleven verse twenty one go hand join in hand the wicked shall not be unpunished but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered doesn't matter how cool you want to be with the heathens man it doesn't matter he has something already spoken against them man. It's not gonna go away. It's not gonna get. It's not gonna have grace and mercy on them. They're going to have to deal with that, man. All right. They're gonna have to deal with that. Nothing we can do about it, right? One more piece of man. I want to try to get. Let me see if I can find it right quick. One more piece of man. I want y'all to see. Now, Cause the most high. Set us apart. Right. He set us apart, man. Set us apart from all nations and people by the law. Let me 
So just because you keep the law, that doesn't make it to where, you know, um, that's not making you set apart because you're still, um, you're still joining to those that the most High separated us from. Okay. He separated us from them because they serve idols because they didn't get the oracles of the most High. Only we did. Right. So this is a lesson that shows you, man. All right. That the salvation, man, has come to Israel and that the Gentiles all in the scripture is being really referenced as Israel. All right. They're not of they're not of the heathen, they're of Israel, man. Let me give you one more precept. Well, maybe two more. All right. Two more. This is uh First Corinthians. Um chapter 10. More of a brethren, as Israel, I would that you should not be ignorant how all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized under Moses. Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did eat of the spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Mashiach. This is Paul writing to the Corinthians. If they're not Israelites, why would he mention this historical um, wonderful miraculous deliverance that I had delivered us, Israel from two complete strangers? Why would he say this to them? He said, you know, more of a brother and I wouldn't have you I would not have you be ignorant how that all that all our fathers, our Gentiles, and it's like got the same fathers. They don't. All right. Let's read this, man. Ah, Revelation. Revelation chapter 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of and the faith of the saints. This is what the saints, the Israelites, are waiting for. For the Most High to send His Son to put those that are in, um, put in captivity, put them in captivity. For those that killed us unjustly with the sword to be killed with the sword. This is what the nation of Israel is waiting for. This is our salvation to get back on our land and reign under King Yeshai, okay, in righteousness, all right, and in truth. All right, so y'all better learn how to separate yourselves from the heathen. I better learn how to um, be holy unto the most high. You better know for sure that this salvation is exclusive, man. All right. Hope y'all receive this truth. You know, hope y'all study this stuff. Go with yourself. Get your understanding, get the breakdown, right? All glory to the most high. Yes, your high. Hashem, my shot Shabbat Shalom. Allah, Haya, Allah, Haya, now, Ahaya, Kad. Hear, O Israel, Ahaya, our power, right, is one. All right, God will bless Sabbath. Y'all be blessed. Shalom.